keep going. Councillors, can I have your attention, please? I welcome you all to this meeting of the Cardinia Shire Council, and I declare the meeting open. This meeting will be conducted in accordance with the Council's governance rules. It is important that members of the public present in the gallery respect the setting and do not disrupt the meeting, particularly during debate and discussion by councillors on items in the agenda, and in particular, please do not interject during the debate. We will commence the meeting with the following reflection. I would ask those gathered to join us now for a few moments of silence as we reflect on our roles in this chamber. Please use this opportunity for reflection, prayer or thought to focus on our shared intention to work respectfully together for the well-being of our whole community. Thank you. The Cardinia Shire Council respectfully acknowledges that we are on the traditional lands of the Bunurong and Wurundjeri people and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I note there are no apologies tonight. Minutes of previous meetings, can I please have a motion to adopt the minutes of previous meetings as listed? Uh, being the General Council meeting 11th of December 23 and the Town Planning Committee meeting 5th of Feb 2024. Councillor Davies? Is there a seconder? Councillor Graham Moore, all those in favour? I declare that carried, thank you. Councillors, are there any declarations of interest tonight? I see none, thank you. Moving on to ordinary business, item 6.2.1, Officers Major Activity Centre, Urban Design Framework. We have received correspondence today from Josh Maitland, the Associate Director of Planning at Ethos Urban. This correspondence has come in via the Ask a Question at a Council Meeting Portal. The contents of this letter have been passed on to councillors for their consideration prior to the meeting and will be formally responded to by officers after the Council Meeting. Council officers have presented the report uh, we are about to debate in consideration of Officer Holdings' original submission, uh, as well as the 70 uh, other 70 submissions. I also want to mention that a letter was sent out indicating a 5 p.m. start as opposed to a 7 p.m. start, so we do apologise for that. Can I please have a mover for item 6.2.1? Councillor Radford. Thank you. I move the officer's recommendations, which is that council approve and endorse officer's major activity centre urban design framework. Thank you, Councillor Radford. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Davies. Councillor Radford to speak, please. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Davies, for your second. Um, this, the officer, uh, sorry, the urban design framework is um, a guide to the subdivision, the land use, and the development within officers' town centre. And this was, uh, this has recently been updated and aligns with the PSP, Cardinia's planning scheme, as well as feedback received through community consultation and stakeholder engagement. This report seeks support from councillors to endorse a finalised UDF, allowing council officers to advocate for the outcomes sought within the stuck document. So, uh, as I said, the officers' town centre is designated as a major activity centre in Plan Melbourne 2017 to 2015 and is considered the heart of the officer precinct structure plan, which I'll refer to as the PSP. The boundary of the town centre was defined in the officer PSP and has remained the same for the UDF. With over 130 land parcels and approximately 80 landowners in the officer town centre, the UDF provides certainty regarding the precinct's future development and will facilitate the delivery of well integrated urban form. A community consultation was held presenting the draft officer UDF between February and March 2023. This included in-person drop-in sessions at the council offices, an in-person workshop, workshop with the officer specialist school students and an online survey. An engagement was successful with several participations, oh, sorry, I can't speak, participants attending in person and using online channels to communicate their ambitions and concerns. And within this attached report, you'll see all of that, which includes comments. I just wanted to highlight a couple of comments. My favourite probably being this one. Just build it for goodness sake. That's what we're all thinking here in this area. 
please just build it. Let's get it going. That's what we want. We've got one centre square there um, sitting out by itself and we've got the officer, uh, sit, we've got the council buildings here also just sitting out here. So yes, officers are eager to see this officer town centre developed in accordance with the aspirations of the precinct structure plan, but it is important also to ensure that this UDF is, is does supports that and we see the right things being developed in this area. Um, other comments were much of officer Beaconsfield and Pakenham are not pram or disability friendly with narrow or no footpaths. That's really important and I'd like to um, also see that our, uh, the officer town centre is welcoming, friendly and inclusive for everybody. So everybody can access it. Um, and thought I had one more comment. As a resident of an adjoining residential community, having a vibrant heart is what officer is missing now. And it's very important the area is accessible for pedestrians and cyclists primarily to access the civic and community facilities as well as the train session, train station. So there are people keen to see this uh, happen to make sure that's accessible. And um, as a result, the this updated UDF includes these comments and there was way more than what I just read then um, that, that well, includes all these comments in the updated UDF. So I thank everybody for attending those sessions because it is really, really important to get that feedback. Um, but I'll go to my seconder for the moment. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Radford. We now go to the seconder, Councillor Davies. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Radford. Um, I would briefly like to acknowledge that Councillor's strategic planning staff have um, been very dedicated in the preparation of this documentation and the efforts of the community, including children in this the collaborative engagement. Um, Councillor Radford mentioned that a vibrant heart was mentioned in a community response, and I believe that there is um, quality information um, now ready for endorsement and pre presentation to the VPA. <laughs> And um, I would like to briefly acknowledge that the frustration shared across the community and the time taken to um, to see see the development. Um, but I believe we're ready, and I do look forward to the development of the town centre. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davies. Are there any other speakers to this item? Councillor Colin Ross. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just raising this issue, it's quite interesting being on council for quite a period of time. We in the past have moved. Um, applications and approved applications to build supermarkets, cinemas, everything in the um, central business district of Officer in the past. Unfortunately, it hasn't come about. So I'm, I'm really pleased to see that this has been updated. It's um, more user friendly with more people living here. And in the past, when they used to do the, um, the responses, there wasn't as many people living here going back, say, seven or eight years ago. So now it's more um, representative of the people who live here now to see what they would like to have and in addition to what was there anyway. Anyway, I look forward to seeing this happen and I hope it happens a hell of a lot faster than it's been happening. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Are there any other speakers to this item? There being none, I'll go back to our mover. Councillor Radford to sum up, please. Thank you, Councillor Davies and Councillor Ross for your words of support to this. Um, as we said before, there are 28,300 residents in this area, all waiting and waiting and have been waiting a very long time for the development to happen here. Uh, later on in the meeting, I will be presenting a notice of motion formally requesting council to provide a update on that development. And so I look forward to uh, presenting that later on. So implementation of the UDF is dependent on private sector development. Developers will fund all initiatives identified within the UDF unless these are funded by the Officer Development Contributions Plan. And Council will continue to work with key stakeholders to ensure that development occurs in line with the visions and objectives of the UDF. And as I said earlier, officers are keen to see this um, being developed. And so by supporting this uh, recommendation today, that's going to get the ball rolling again, I suppose, but continue to keep that ball rolling. So um, please read the attached report and, uh, and I seek support from councillors to endorse this finalised UDF. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Radford. We'll now put item 6.2.1 to a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried. Thank you. Item 6.2.2, expression of interest, management of seniors housing. Can I have a move, please? Councillor Carol Ryan.
through you, Mayor. Um, I would like to move the um, officer's recommendations on expression of interest management of senior housing. Uh, the recommendations, sorry, bear with me, my computer just jumped out. That's okay, we can take it that you're moving the officer's recommendations if you'd like. Uh, I've found it now, Mayor, yeah, thank you. That the council, the council support officers to commence an expression of interest campaign that identifies suitable registered community housing providers who are interested in providing management and wrap around service for senior housing within Cadinia Shire. Prepare a report commencing um, a, and preferred provider to to cancel for endorsement following the expression of the interest campaign. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Do we have a second for that? Councillor Jeff Springfield. Thank you. I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Ryan. Thank you through you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Springfield for seconding it. Council currently provides the tenancy management and maintenance of 10 senior housing units across two sites located in Pakenham and Cockatoo. Residents of these units are local adult, older adults who are unable to find affordable housing accommodation through the commercial rental market. While Council has provided the service for several years, it is not a core function of the local government and can be better managed by a community housing provider who has the expertise to provide a higher quality service and wrap around, serve, um, around support services for these tenants. Council is seeking to consider expressions of interest from a registered housing providers with expertise in senior housing who can um, take over the management of these two sites. And in the case of Pakenham site, purchase and or redevelop the site to provide additional affordable housing accommodation for the community. Two senior housing sites were developed within Cadinia Shire in the 1980s that Council continued to manage and maintain. Since this time, the community housing sector has become well established in Melbourne and many registered providers operate within the region who have greater expertise than Council to provide this service. Community housing providers are not for non-profit mission driven organisations. They own development and maintain rental housing for people with low income and moderate incomes and require social and affordable housing. In addition to housing services, they often facilitate wraparound support through the complementary services, providing provisions such as case management and care coordination. Given the recent investments by the state and federal governments into social affordable housing, it is, a timely, um, it is timely to explore options for a registered provider to take over the management of these sites, considering the increased demand for affordable housing and funding available for house, housing providers to develop new affordable housing. A lot of people, unless you're you're from the age of 55 onwards, um, you won't realise how difficult it really is for seniors to find housing. They are in a situation where uh, if they can't afford to buy their own home, they run the risk, like a lot of other people, but they're at a higher risk of uh, being uh, removed out of a unit or a house. Um, to provide for other, um, other identities, whether it be young families, whether it be um, a um, mature age family identity, but um, seeing as there's more and more seniors that we're seeing that are living in their cars, they're living on the street, and um, this will provide hopefully the support that is needed for these identities. And I'll leave it at that for the seconder. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. We'll go to the seconder, Councillor Springfield, please. 
thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ryan, for um, moving this agenda item. I'm very happy to support this, um, and it's good to see it's been a bit of a it's been a bit of a progression, you know, and discussions in the background uh, since I've been on council on looking at alternative you know, options for this space. Um, so uh, I think it's I think it's timely now that we've done a, a, a number of renovations for Cockatoo um, cottages to bring them up to um, to bring them up to a more modern standard. They had been left lacking for some time um, to you know, explore options for the future to see how we can best manage um, these sites and best manage the needs of the residents uh, in these sites. Um, in, in a way, it's in a way, to be honest, Mayor, you know, I, I don't think our council is best place to manage these um, sites internally in the future because it's a very small element, a very small element of what we do um, in our structure of our organisation. Um, rather than signing a, finding another proponent out there, that that's their bread and butter. They do this all the time. They have access to wraparound services. Um, they have access and understanding of what's needed, you know, um, to best support residents in these environments. So look, um, at this point in time, it's just um, supporting the commencement of the expression of interest to see what comes back. So I hope that there's going to be a lot of great options come back for this council to consider. And we'll be making sure that we bring the residents um, on these sites along with us for the journey the whole time through. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak to this item? Councillor Colin Ross. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just speaking to this, um, I sit on the um, Social and Affordable Housing uh, Forum Group run by, chaired by Council. And this is one area that um, the, the, the sector has come forward a long, long way in the last 10 years. Management of these groups uh, of um, seniors housing and wraparound services has come so far that these people carry expertise, they carry experience with them and they know where to go and what to do to get the best outcomes. It is best practice to go down this pathway if we can get the right people. Our social and affordable housing group has many not-for-profit groups who, who uh, manage different social and affordable housing and it is best practice getting these people to do. They, they, they're they on the ground, they know when changes happen, they know where to source money, and often the most successful places you'll find have these groups who, who manage them. So I think it is the right way to go. Uh, we can't be the knowers of all things, but we can provide um, assets that other people can use, like spaces that we have quite often and we lease out to different services that come to Cardinia Shire. So I look forward to seeing what comes back, what groups apply to, to do this work and the presentations they might have towards council about what they can offer. Anyway, I think it's a really good move and thank you for withdrawing this, Councillor Ryan. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? There being none, I'll go back to our mover, Councillor Carol Ryan to sum up, please. Thank you to Councillor Springfield and Councillor Ross uh, for supporting this. I think this, this is just so important and, and touching on the base too, that um, case management is a really important identity. Uh, case managers will be able to help um, our seniors in reference to um, um, their experiences and what they're going through and to get them through the process of, of rehousing or establishing a better a better unit and more upgrade unit and um, and also helping paying bills, mental health support. There's a lot of um, areas of case management that uh, would be supportive and these providers um, uh, do have the expertise in that and um, I think we all want to see that we want nothing but the best for our seniors in our community and we've already um, started these processes with uh, these housing but uh, we, we do seek that someone else um, will be a better provider. So Council is seeking to consider expressions of extent, ex, sorry, of interest for registered housing providers with expertise in senior housing, with the intention of providing and improving services to the residents and enhance the stock of affordable housing. Council will follow the the and engage process and ensure that good governance and support is provided for current tenants. Residents have been informed of the EI, EOI process and timelines following the EOI 
evaluation process, a report will be presented to Council with the recommendations provided. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. We'll put item 6.2.2 to a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried. Thank you. Item 6.2.3, Quinn Road, Gembrook, petition response. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Jeff Springfield. Uh, thank you, Ma'am. Um, I'd like to move that Council note the actions already undertaken to address the safety issues along Quinn Road and to advise petitioner of road safety actions already undertaken by Council and that a special charge scheme would need to be supported by residents and considered by Council any future Council annual budget process for the road to be sealed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Graham Moore. Councillor Springfield to introduce the item, please. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mayor. So uh, this petition came to us um, last year, towards the end of last year, um, from a number of residents on Quinn Road in Gembrook, um, highlighting some uh, concerns about safety, about sight lines, about some drainage issues and about um, the road users, um, the behaviour as well of um, how some particular road users um, operate and the speeding on this site. So. Look, I'd like to note the work that's been done in relation to this. Um, council teams have been out there to um, uh, inspect the road, inspect the drainage, um, and look over what can be done. So um, to date, true removal has been undertaken uh, and concealed driveway signage has been installed. Um, drainage maintenance has been uh, scheduled along with the traffic count, uh, tra traffic count to come in the uh, coming months. Um, so uh, yeah, I think believe in within the report it says within the first term of um, the first school term there's going to be um, the traffic counts going to come about, and they're going to um, which is going to give us a bit of indication of how widely used it is, as well as the speed limits that are utilised. Um, there has was concerns raised about speeding drivers and using this as a bit of a rat the uh, rat run so to speak. Um, they're trying to avoid you know traffic on the main road, so this will give us an indication of this and maybe lead us towards what other what other things that can be done. It is um it is difficult at times though to you know for council to implement measures to you know we can't penalise speeding drivers so to speak, but we do um, forward this on to police when we know there is activity. Um, and if this traffic count and speed count does come up indicating that it's a constant behaviour, um, then the police will certainly be um, working with us to try and address that. Um, but I'd like to note, you know, there's been eight trees removed, um, particularly in one site, which um, came from the lead petitioner. Um, and, you know, from the photos I've observed, it's improved sight lines, which is fantastic. Uh, look, I look forward to the drainage maintenance team getting out there to conduct um, their further works, you know, to improve the network there. But I, I will note that the team has been under the pump lately in the last few months of um, a lot of work out there across our regions. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. We'll go to your second to Councillor Moore. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor Springfield, for withdrawing this item. It just shows you that um, uh, the residents of the, of the petitions are, have been acknowledged by the staff, uh, and I think uh, the staff have done a really fantastic job of acknowledging the issues that the Quinn Road has. I know the road. This is not far from where I live, and um, I know this road is used as a shortcut um, Around, around the corner. So the, the big issue I have is that um, doing this as a road scheme would be um, a bit of a problem with, if it was a bitumen road, um, it would cause this road to be used more often instead of the main road around the outside. So, um, and I know it's only the tail end of the petition, um, And uh, but what, what they've done with the sight lines, particularly on that corner where that number 27 is, um, remove those trees as Council Springfield uh, has mentioned, it has taken that over the sight lines up and they're one of the major critical things of that road. Because we know that when we have the storm events that we have recently with the um, the storm erosion of the roads, uh, when our gutters become deep and um, it, it actually makes the roads quite skinny. So what happens, it makes it very difficult for two cars to pass. And that's where part of the problem is. And these, these are being addressed by our fantastic staff, our road maintenance engineers. And um, so I think that will help a lot of the issues there. I noticed the um, the resident, the, the main um, petitioner, the lead petitioner in this um, was offered the use of having a mirror. But they're a really good idea on tight corners 
um, but neglected to um, to take that option. But um, I'm sure there's, there's going to be a few more improvements in Quinn Ray, but it's really great for the staff. I want to thank the staff for um, what they've they've done in this particularly petition for this um, job to get the result for our residents for safety reasons, and that's our main concern. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? I see none. I'll go back to our original mover, Councillor Springfield, to sum up, please. Mm. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And look, in summary, I'd just like to thank the lead petitioner and um, and all the people who participate participated in the petition for taking the time to um, highlight their concerns to council. Um, you know, it really is important that community members do bring to our attention issues um, such as this because um, we council staff are unaware of all the things that go across, you know, our vast, our massive unsealed road network and, and our massive 12 and a half, you know, 100 square kilometres of council, you know, of the site that is Cadinia. Um, so it is really important that it's a proactive relationship between community and, and council to acknowledge these things. So um, look, I think it's great we've done some work there. I look forward to the coming works for the drainage to be um, to be conducted. And again, I thank the petitioners for raising these concerns with council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. We'll now put item 6.2.3 to a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried. Thank you. Item 6.2.4, multiple sports field lighting package tender. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Bredow. Thank you, Mayor. I move the following. The Council accept the tender submitted by Comlec Services for RFT 3.0. Sports field lighting package for the total amount of one thousand, sorry, one million fifty thousand six hundred thirty-eight dollars, excluding GST. The contract completion date is by the first of June two thousand twenty-five. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Do I have a seconder for that, Councillor Colin Ross? Councillor Owen, to speak first, please. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ross. I'm really pleased that this uh, tender is before Council uh, tonight. Um, long time coming. A uh, bit of a history of this item, and I just would like to detail that if I can. During 2022, Council conducted a number of audits across its um, community facilities, mainly around recreational facilities. You know, this was important for councillors to get a really good assessment of the priorities of improving infrastructure um, uh, across the Shire particularly around recreation facilities, trying to remove the politics out of which ones get done first and, and so forth. So the idea of these audits to really identify the priorities. And so back in 2022, um, Council did conduct uh, these sporting lighting infrastructure audits. Uh, this was done uh, by Coulthard Shim Engineers on behalf of Web Lighting Group. The audits identified and ranked priority works across the recreation reserves and sports facilities. Where assets were determined to be a risk, they were made safe and cyclic programs of design and replacement has been established and will continue into the 24-25 financial year. So as a result of these audits, I do remember, urgent works had to be done. Once we knew that some were really failing as in the poles were going to fall down. So we took um, immediate action because of that risk. So we saw poles immediately uh, pulled down and they were at Tumak Reserve, um, also Beacon Sealed uh, Rec Reserve, and I think there was issues at up. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, at Beacon Sealed Rec Reserve, at um, Perth Allison Reserve, and also Upper Beak. So it was good that we we saw the issue. Obviously, it's, we're now at this time, we're going toward the tender, which is great. So as I said before, um, uh, the ovals that are going to improve uh, improve lighting is Tumuk, Upper Beak Rec Reserve, Mountain Road Rec Reserve, Perth Allison Reserve in Beaconsfield, and Dick Jones Park. So we did go to tender on the 13th of November last year. Six submissions were received, which was good. Um, top three were shortlisted and given the opportunity to provide their best and final offer. So the lighting design incorporates the use of Gen 3.5 LED lighting, replacing obsolete metal um, luminaries, new LED lighting units, and will provide an increased 
uniformity of lux levels on playing fields at up to 70% less electrical usage. Gen 3.5 LED will have useful lifespan of 50,000 hours. So we note the, the, the power saving, which is good for our volunteer committees of management. Um, obviously they pay uh, those bills, obviously council pays other bills if it's uh, not a committee of management. So we will see some great savings, which is really good. I do want to acknowledge the contributions of other, other governments and, and groups. Um, the Victorian government, DECA, will fully fund the Beaconsfield Reserve at Perth Allison. We all know that's Crown land and it's great that they're stepping up to the plate and contributing to these works. Uh, I know our officers have been advocating very strongly for a reasonable contribution uh, from the state government via DECA for you know, urgent works at Beaconsfield Rec Reserve, Perth Allison. And, and we've got a really good, uh, good commitment from the government and lighting is part of that commitment. So it's great that they're contributing towards it. Obviously council, uh, $1.3 million. And also the Packham Football Club um, has also agreed a maximum of 33,000 for the two mark reserve project. So I thank them um, for contributing to these works. So um, I will leave it there uh, for other councillors to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. We'll go to your seconder, Councillor Ross. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Owen. This is very interesting, a million dollars um, being invested into um, sports fields for lighting. I can remember back in 2009 when the AFL upgraded their, their lux on the grounds, the background at Tumuk Reserve went from 80 lux playing junior football games to 130 lux, which meant they couldn't play junior football games there anymore. And the club approached council and at the time, all the councillors got $90,000 to spend as a councillor inside their, their wards. And I was approached by Tumac Reserve and they actually said, we can't play junior footy on the back anymore because the AFL won't, um, their insurance won't allow it. And it was only junior football um, games, but you have to comply with the associations and their insurance policies and their risk policies in relation to this. So the club at the time put in $30,000, we put in $90,000. And they upgraded the back back lights at um, at T Tumac Valley Reserve so the juniors could play football there. And this is an ongoing thing when you're dealing with associations who deal with risk. We need to upgrade it all the time. And I know last year at Perth Ellis, one of the grounds that will be upgraded, and I'm so pleased as Councillor Owen passed on, that the whole $231 thousand dollars to upgrade those lights has been done because they couldn't even train there because the, the old poles that were sitting there were were so bad that I think one of them was on the verge of falling down onto the ground so therefore they just were told you can't even use the lights anymore so they actually went up through a season where all the different groups there um, once it got to basically five o'clock at night they had to go and hire these big lights that would sort of shine across the ground a little bit which wasn't really practicable I think it's really good that council has identified this and we've gone through looking for the reserves that um, do need the upgraded lighting. Uh, I must say it's, it's a much um, more expensive now, but as people pointed out that you, you get a saving in uh, the power that's used and it won't cost as much to do it. And I must say the lighting, when you see the lighting today compared to what it used to be, is so much more um, across the whole board. The whole field will be lit up right, versus certain areas that used to be lit up. Anyway, I support this. Um, I think it's really good. We're starting off with five sites and we'll, as Councillor Owen pointed out, Council's gone through to find all the ones in need by doing an audit right across the whole of the Shire. So this doesn't happen again where, where different groups who use it in the middle of winter time can't use their lights anymore. And at about quarter to five, five o'clock, you just can't use the grounds anymore. So anyway, um, I look forward to seeing the outcome at the end of it and I'm sure we'll, the, the community will let us know and our officers will do another audit to make sure that the lights are exactly as they, they promised and delivered with contract. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak to this item? There being none, I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Owen to sum up. Thank you, Mayor. I um, just wanted to uh, thank the community groups um, that's sort of been patient during this period. It has been a challenge. You know, you've got the major reserve in Packenham, the Oval One without uh, appropriate lighting. So they've had to undergo, obviously, you know, limiting any sort of uh, night games, et cetera. So 
um, and training. So I acknowledge their their patience at Perth Allison as well. I was there um, during the during um, the winter months last year as the, the generators going on two portable lights that were going um, uh, providing some lighting, but obviously inadequate lighting. So I thank you for the patience. I just I was just go back to these audits. It was so important. Um, lighting was one. There was other audits conducted, but it will help. And I was really you know re um, really advocating for this because council, when it's allocating its budget, has to make decisions and priority order is important, uh, not impacted by politics. So what? Uh, where are the urgent areas? What needs to be done? Um, and that is fed to the budget process, not politics. And I've seen over the years that politics plays games regarding who gets what. This is you know, giving people the upgrades that are deserving and a priority. And obviously these lighting was extreme risk um, so I just wanted to highlight that. So I look forward to these upgrades and our community enjoying them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Oh, just before we put this to a vote, I note within the report that the successful tender of Comelec proposes a 12 to 16 week construction program and a 12 month defect period for each of the five project sites and have demonstrated they can align works with Council's program and user needs at each site. So I think it's just important to note that. All right, thank you, Councillors. We'll now put item 6.2.4 to a vote. All those in favour? Against, I declare that carried. Thank you. Item 6.2.5, right hand turns within the Brunt and Ricks Road corridor. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Tammy Radford. Thank you, Mayor. I move the officer's recommendation, which is that Council for the road safety and operational reasons described in this report and in the attached traffic impact assessment, it is recommended that a centre median opening not be provided at the entrance to the Blue Gum Lifestyle Village or within the wider Brunt Road sorry, Brunt Ricks Road Corridor in line with the requirements of the officer PSP. And secondly, council officers further engage with the Blue Gum Lifestyle Village regarding the access arrangements and future works required in the officer PSP in the local area. Thank you. Is there a seconder for that? Councillor Stephanie Davies, we'll go to the mover, Councillor Radford to speak. Thank you. Thank you for seconding Councillor Davies. Uh, so works have recently been completed on Brunt Road in Officer to bring a section of this road in line with the standards required by the Officer Precinct Structure Plan. But this resulted in um, access arrangements at the Blue Gum Lifestyle Village being restricted to left in and left out only. So at the last ordinary council meeting, I presented a notice of motion uh, to investigate the implications of providing a centre median um, open openings along the Brunt Road, I can't get that word right, Brunt Ricks Corridor to facilitate right turn movements. And now this traffic uh, assessment has now been completed and has found that providing centre median openings along this corridor is not in line with the intended or required standard for a Connector Street Boulevard Road within the Officer PSP and will adversely impact the safety and operation of Brunt Road at the location required for the entrance at Blue Gum Lifestyle Village. So I was really, I thank the um, council officers for getting this report done so quickly and bringing it to the um, February meeting. I really appreciate the work uh, that went into getting that done, seeing as I asked for it right before Christmas. So thank you for everyone involved. Um, I have read through it thoroughly, had a number of briefings. Um, I, I really wanted to be sure that this report was suggesting the right thing and that we were doing the right thing. And I, I've, I have to go with the report and say that it would adversely affect the safety of road users and also impact on the use of the road, so causing too many stop starts along the road. So within this report, which is attached to this agenda item on page five and six, um, it sort of outlines that. And there's a map, particularly on page six, I think it is, um, which shows that, that that opposite the Blue Gum Lifestyle Village, there are two roads that will be developed that will provide left in and left out only opposite that. So by putting a medium strip in between those two roads, this sounds really confusing, I know as I'm saying it, um, is going to impact, is going to cause an impact to the way the traffic moves along there and safety 
and safety. Um, so that's my main reason for saying that, yes, I agree with this traffic report. Um, and I'm really, and as I said, I'm really happy that this got done because it outlined that very clearly to me and I hope to other um, councillors as well, that it would be uh, not the right decision to allow that um, medium break in there. So I'll go to my seconder now. Thank you, Councillor Radford. Councillor Davies to speak, please. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Radford. Um, prior to working on Council, I actually worked in traffic engineering and um, transport planning, and um, one of the least safe movements is turning right across traffic, um, and with the additional traffic volumes, that does increase the risk to residents. Hence, um, I was very glad to support Councillor Radford in her own safety assessment and traffic in calling for a traffic impact assessment. And I'm I'm really delighted to see um, the evidence provided provided for us. Um, and um, the next step is um, pending council endorsing this report will be um, engagement where the council officers actually speak to um, the, the road users affected by this by this change. So I um yeah I just want to emphasize just the significance in um to someone to actually change their access, but also the requirement to keep people safe. So um, it's not an easy one, but um, but I think we've got um, evidence behind us to make the responsible decision. So I'm um, very happy to support this tonight. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Radford. Thank you, Councillor Davies. Are there any other councillors who'd like to speak to this item? I see Councillor Springfield. Uh, look, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Look, I've uh, note. I note the recommendations within the report and, you know, have read it thoroughly. Um, look, I, I have to look, I have to be honest and say that yeah, I, I, look, I'm disappointed that we haven't been able to come up with a better um, outcome or solution for this this site. Um, you know, look, I've got to say I'm, I'm glad we speak about our communications because uh, I'm disappointed with the communications that we had with these residents leading up to this. And it's, you know, there's a lot of projects going on for, for council um, in its strategic management and development. So I know things get looked over and missed and it was no malicious fault of, you know, I believe in council officers um, actions or any of that, but it, it's still disappointing for these residents that weren't made aware of it, that, but we weren't, that we weren't aware to say, hey, guess what, you're not going to be able to use your road as you previously did, right? And that we didn't put in some slight mitigations perhaps, you know? The actual medium strip that's been built, if it was only 10, 15 metres less, they would have still had full right of way, you know, left and right turn access like the rest of the street between the medium strip that has been built and Princess Highway currently does. So look, I do, so uh, you know, I I recognise the importance that they've talked about for safety, and I don't, and I'm not a traffic engineer, so I won't just try and discredit that and say that it's wrong, and I can't say that, but I I just think this it's disappointing. This process couldn't have been done better. And look, and just to note in the wording of the recommendation, like in it, and it does say, you know that it's not recommended within the medium opening to be provided at the entrance of Blue Gum or within the wider Brunt Ricks Road corridor in line with the requirements of the officer PSP. Um, if you take a road, drive down Ricks Road, there already are a couple of openings in that medium strip corridor. So people, when they exit the school, they can uh, 30 metres down the road, do a U-turn to go back the other way um, when you want to enter the school. So there is exceptions to that. And look, I will be curious to see as time progresses in the rest of Ricks Road and the rest of Brunt Road from the tra from the railway line south, if how that looks. But look, I really just want to say I feel for the residents who weren't aware that this was going to impact them in the way that it has. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak to this item? Councillor Ross. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Radford, for raising this and Councillor Springfield. Uh, it's really good to question some of these things. Unfortunately, I, th I think it was built, so it's so much harder to get things, as Councillor Springfield said, if it was made slightly so shorter. And I know in the past we have had victories as councillors in this space where Webster Way comes out onto Bald Hill Road. Before they built the medium strip, they were going to change it where it comes out of Webster Way and it was going to be one and a half lanes in and one and a half lanes out. 
and then marked the road. And I went and said, you've got to have two lanes coming out onto Bald Hill Road, one doing a right-hand turn and one a left. Otherwise, they'll stop each other when they're coming out with A-Van and everything there. And and they went down and had a look at it, but they hadn't built it. They'd only marked the lines on the road. And I'm not even a traffic engineer. I'm just someone who looked at it and thought it wasn't common sense. So they actually went down there and they changed the line. So they got one that goes in and there's two that go out. So we had victory there. Another time there was a bus shelter in um, Heritage Springs and they were building a house and they're going to put the bus shelter right in front of the house where the bedroom was going to be. And I said, why don't you move it 20 metres down a little bit further where the park was? And they said, oh, it has to be within 150 metres or whatever, but but it was still within sight. So sometimes it's really good to question things and sometimes they can actually do something about it. So I'd encourage the councillors to keep keep asking questions. We can get results at times. Unfortunately, we just couldn't find the solution for this. So it's really sad for the residents, but there's nothing more you could have done. You got the report done, you looked at it, and I think that's really good. Anyway, it's sad we didn't get the result we were after. Thanks, me. Thanks, Councillor Roth. Are there any other councillors who'd like to speak to this item? Councillor Moore. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Just something short. I um I, I'm disappointed by the result for the for the residents here. I really am. I, I can understand uh, and I can see what they will do. They'll drive over the median strip and do right hand turns there. And it disappoints me to think that that can happen because they're doing it as we speak. Um so this is a just a, a poor planning result, and I know we, we're going by the the um, regulations in that area and the PSP, which which we're governed by. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, Councillor Radford for bringing this up for the residents there because it's uh, very important. But the thing that's probably not said is doing a U-turn is probably a lot more dangerous than doing a right-hand turn. And that's what will happen in this circumstance. They'll actually do U-turns up and back around uh, to get back down to the shopping centre down on uh, Ricks Road. Um, so I... <laughs> I understand the laws of the land and um, um, it's been said before, um, I'm not a traffic engineer. I don't want to be a traffic engineer. These, these, are, these are difficult circumstances to uh, to decide on in these these situations. And um, But a right-hand turn one way out to me is not a right-hand turn in. Would have possibly made a lot more common sense, but um, I guess common sense is not very common today, Mayor. So it's um it's one of those sort of things that we're we're governed by this, but I feel um, um I feel quite upset for the residents that live there because I know how inconvenient this is going to be more than anything else. But you know, community safety is is one of our high high, high priorities. We have to cut any shire, and um and I want to, want to thank the staff for looking into this. Um and um th this is the only answer we've got. Well, it's the only answer we have. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Are there any other councillors to speak to this item? I see none. I'll go back to our mover, Councillor Radford, to sum up, please. Thank you. And thank you to all my fellow councillors for speaking to this. Obviously, I'll leave it all up to you as to whether you endorse this recommendation or not. Um, I just wanted to highlight that significant traffic volumes are expected along this road. It, uh, it's getting busier as, as we speak, as the, as the area is growing. It's likely to exceed the estimated volumes modelled for the original PSP, which was uh, 14,500 vehicles per day. Um, so it's going to be a busy road, so we need to ensure that it is safe. Um, and that's really what I'm coming down to here. I agree with Councillor Springfield that communication and engagement with the Blue Gum Lifestyle Village is, was not good enough. And I, I know that needs to be, we can't fix it now, but I would, I, in my original notice of motion, I requested that Council engages with this community um, and informs them of how this is going to affect them, what the changes is going to be, and for any future um, changes in that area. The uh, the median strip and that road upgrade was done quite quickly to in line with the school opening up around the corner to make sure that, that there was access to that school. So I completely agree with all the uh, statements made. Um, it is disappointing, but I can't in good conscience go against this report and request that that medium strip be put in. I don't believe that it would be safe. Um, so I am moving the officer's recommendation tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Radford, for your summary. We now put item 6.2.5 to a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried.
Thank you. Moving on to policy reports. Item 6.3.1, proposed community law 2024. Can I have a mover, please? Can I have a mover for item 6.3.1? Councillor Jeff Springfield. I move the officer's recommendations as listed. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. Do I have a seconder for this item? Councillor Graham Moore. I'll go to the mover, Councillor Springfield, to speak, please. Uh, th thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, so this is to give notice um, of the proposed update to uh, local law. Um, and look, there's it encompasses, you read through the report, it encompasses many different aspects of local law numbers that's underneath the umbrella of local law number 17. Um, I won't go into the details of them, but a lot of it's just is updating um, things that weren't really aligned previously, you know, that we've recognised in our compliance sort of services, um, some penalties and these types of things. It's all within, it's all within the report. And I, um, once, if this passes tonight, um, it will then go on for public exhibition. So this is not the, um, this is not the endorsement of it. This is the proposal of it. And we'll go through the governance process of, um, for the benefit of residents who can read through it all, give us their recommendations, and it'll come back before this council to consider and make, um, and make a decision upon in the future. Um, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. I'll go to your second, Councillor Moore. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I endorse uh, Council Springfield's um, ideas on what what this um, law, this item is about. Um, look, the, the local laws, um, uh, can, the proposed amendments uh, to improve the effectiveness and the efficiency of local laws need to be upgraded sometimes, and, and this is what this is doing here. So it's all um, out for um, public um, engagement for the from the community. So I'm looking forward to um, that endorsement down the track somewhere. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Are there any other councillors? Councillor Davies to speak. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, councillors. I'd like to just mention briefly that um, changes to um, in a proposed reduction in the use of real estate agent pointer boards is proposed. And um, pending endorsement tonight, consultation will commence. So um, often, particularly in the Pakenham and Officer Townships, some agents have provided feedback that signs are being used for the purpose of increasing brand recognition um, rather than genuinely being used to help a customer find a property. And um, it means that agents that are choosing to be non-compliant are actually obtaining an unfair advertising advantage and encouraging an arms race in order to get that recognition. So we'd like to um, We'd like to, um, we're proposing to actually um, put in place laws like other municipalities where with the same criteria that does apply. And um, it, it is known this system to substantially reduce the prevalence of signs being left out for a long period of time, reduce an entitlement to play, place signs on major thoroughfares and stop a practice where signs are left out for ages just to advertise. But it, it does impact the administrative burden on agents. Um, so a detailed dedicated um, engagement and consultation will be undertaken. And um, it's critical that council understands that the views of the real estate agents are understood and the perspectives of agents that do service different parts of the municipality, noting that we are, we have um, such a wide range of geography, um, including being a growth area. So um, these are very important consultations to be to commence. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davies. Are there any other councillors? Councillor Owen to speak. Thank you, Mayor. Just to add to other councillors' comments, um, some of the other proposed changes is the deliberated, I can't say that word, uh, properties. Um, this has been a real issue, particularly in the growth corridor, where you've got, you know, obviously developers purchase land of an old house and it just led to, you know, basically, be an unsightly uh, you know, mess, basically. And, and so what we're trying to do is trying to uh, restrict that, to try and improve the amenity um, when you've got situations of those sort of vacated houses and, and it's just a real eyesore. So uh, definitely community members over the years have uh, raised this as an issue. Also, I want to uh, uh, mention the offence to conduct a Hoon event or congregate in close proximity to a Hoon event. So Victoria Police, in the absence of um, state laws, 
that can address these, council has to step up to the plate and, and try and help these situations. So Victoria Police have previously requested for councillors to introduce provisions to assist in the suppression and disruption of vehicle hoon behaviour. Hoon driving itself constitutes a hazard and is addressed by the road safety rules, road rules. However, the practice of groups of onlookers congregating in proximity to the events is directly targeted by the local law clause and provides for a simple mechanism by which police may deter such events from occurring. So, you know, this is one way that council can assist our local police and, and improve safety. And also, you know, we've had circumstances of damage to our road assets uh, from this activity. So um, I'm really pleased that council is, is assisting uh, with that emerging issue. So um, I do encourage um, residents to have a look at this document, provide feedback. I had a resident contact me uh, with strong views about weeds, basically agapanthers and and council should have a local law about agapanthers. So um, I encourage that resident to um, maybe put a submission in um, to this local law because we only do this only you know once a term basically. So this is your opportunity to feed into to this um, consultation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Are there any other councillors who'd like to speak to this? Councillor Radford. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I wanted to highlight the increase in infringement penalties for building site amenity and asset protection offences. Being the Ward Council for a growth area, this is a major issue, is the rubbish that the building sites leave and then blow across the rest of the residents' lawns. Um, so previously, it had been a fixed penalty uh, at, of two units, which was a value of $200. That's been since 2005. Um, it's being proposed to change to five penalty units, which is approximately $960. Is that enough for a builder to not continue keeping their site messy? I do question that, but this is why it needs to go to consultation so that people can have their say on this and the asset protection offences will go to eight penalty points, which is approximately $1,540. Uh, consultation will go out, I see here, two dedicated consultation streams for buildings, builders sorry, and real estate agents will be developed and implemented in parallel to the community consultation. So I was uh, very happy to see that happen because I wanted to ensure that our builders were aware of these proposed changes. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Radford. Councillor Ryan to speak, please. Thank you, through me, you may. I just wanted to add, you know, and reintegrate um, some of the things that councillors have already mentioned. Uh, the real estate uh, signage, there is a problem with that, and especially in Pakenham. Um, and some of them are left out from early afternoon on a Friday. They're there all weekend and they're not collected till around about the Tuesday, which is really if they they read the laws and they know the laws of real estate agents, um, but they haven't gone to pick up their signs. So I encourage them to get there and, and read on the, the um, website. Um, and yes, we have hoons continually in and around the area and, uh, you know, the police can only do so much, but these these people are so quick that they're gone before the police even get there. So, um, and uh, dilapidated housing. There are some properties that have been passed through council um, with permits and they haven't followed through yet. So, um, you know, they need to be uh, looking at what the law is and, and uh, the length of time and um, try and prevent these dilapidated houses in and around Cadinia Shire, mainly because we've got youth that that are, are breaking into these sites and they're dangerous sites and um, there have been known to be fires um, happening there for them to keep themselves warm. And uh, so, you know, we don't want any um, of our youth injuring themselves in in an, an old dilapidated um, property. So um, that's all I've got to add to that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Carol Ryan, Councillor Colin Ross. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just highlighting two of these um, clauses that will be proposed changes to the local law 17. Most people can relate to these. A requirement for the owner of a shopping trolley to collect it within 24 hours if, council is di if, if directed by a council officer. In the past, we had a problem with shopping trolleys where they just used to be left everywhere. And we made 
made some of these stores put in the coins. You put a coin in the thing and they had to have those for the trolleys, um, hoping that everybody would put the coin in and t bring it back to get their coin back. Unfortunately, um, it's sort of been let, let go a fair bit and half of it doesn't work now. And in the, in the uh, suburban area of Pakenham, you will often find trolleys put everywhere. And, and then if you just leave them and no one goes to collect them, they finish up in drains and down, down vacant locks and paddocks and people just use them. So this is a really good directive that if council officers require the owners of the trolley to pick it up within 24 hours, they need to. And the second one is most of us have seen businesses that start off and they have inadequate waste services. So therefore their bins uh, overflow they don't hire enough and, and there's a local law in there to say that they must have adequate waste, waste services so their bins are maintained on a regular basis because we all, all have seen bins that overflow from time to time and they just flow down the street, no one ever collects them and it just goes everywhere. So I think these are two really good ones that, that recognise what's happening in the community and I look forward to seeing hopefully an improvement or our officers will be going to make sure that they do follow up. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? I see none. I'll go back to our mover, Councillor Springfield, to sum up, please. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mayor, um, and I appreciate all the other councillors for their input. I don't need to go over uh, any more of the individual um, proposals in there, but but through you, Mayor, I really would um, encourage the community um, to, um, to, to be aware of this once it is uh, release for public comments. Um, it'll be in the coming months. I'll, we'll be in short order, I believe. Um, and I think it's really important because we, we do want to bring community along with these important decisions. And, you know, and it does seem a bit um, uh, onerous. There is a lot of detail within this, but it's important for community feedback because we're job, our job here is to reflect um, the best interests of community. And if that includes putting a ban on Agapanthers, then, um, then, you know, then I'm happy. If that comes overwhelming support, then we can consider that too. But, um, but there is, but it, it is important to update these laws to make sure they're reflective of our times and reflective of our community sentiment um, out there in the uh, local environment. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Springfield, and thank you everyone for your feedback. Just before we put this to a vote, I mean, a number of councillors have mentioned it, but I would encourage our community to provide feedback here. I personally will be relying strongly on that feedback to help finalise my position on this. When I first got in council, I didn't know a great deal about local laws, so a minor change that I was recommending right off the bat was the name. I mean, local law 17 is confusing, so I like what we've proposed here. Cut in your show, council. Community local law 2024, and community is the key word there for me. People have been critical in the past of council, uh, particularly around the level of amenity in certain parts of the Shire. Um, so there's little doubt in my mind that the penalty units, Councillor Radford alluded to it, but the penalty units and the, the level of fines that council can issue needs to be uh, strengthened. Um, so again, I would just implore everyone to give us that strong, clear feedback um, that will happen as part of this process so we can ensure that gets captured in the creation of these laws. Thank you. All right, we'll now put this item to a vote, 6.3.1. All those in favour? Against, I declare that carried. Moving on to item 6.4.1, quarterly financial report 23-24, quarter two, December 2023. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Stephanie Davies. Thank you, Mayor. I am moving the council, uh, the recommendations per the report. Thank you, Councillor Davies. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Radford. Councillor Davies to speak, please. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Radford. Um, the recommendation is that Council receives and notes the quarterly financial report um, for the six months up to the 31st of December 2023. And this is a requirement under Section 97 of the Local Government Act 2020. Within um, this documentation, there are two budget variations, bringing forward expenditure for, of $2,738,732 for the Officer District Park Project and $1,163,661 for the Pioneer Way and Brunt Road Officer um, Construction Project. And um, Part of this recommendation is that the chief executive officer, as is required under the under the um, act, is um, taking note that the chief executive officer has um, uh, provided advice that and is of the opinion that the that a revision to council's budget is not required. 
And um, I'd like to just briefly um, draw your attention to the year to date comprehensive result of $76.4 million surplus is $34.1 million favourable to the ad adopted budget. And the, the, our revenue is tracking higher than expected and mainly due to um, it's due, due to um, contributions income higher due to the office of precinct developing and growing faster than anticipated, lower operating grant revenue and um, capital grant income um, being higher than anticipated. Um, our expenses have been slightly lower than budgeted. Um, depreciation is lower as a result of recent asset valuations and materials and services are showing a favourable variance during due to careful timing of expenditure. So the full year forecast expenditure of $104.2 million is favourable to the adopted budget of $4 million. Uh, and this is um, reported as largely due to income coming in from other sources, including high interest income due to increasing interest rates and um, higher development levies, um, as mentioned, that the Office of Precinct is growing faster than anticipated. There are forecasted savings from the depreciation and um, and um, this is um, a very positive outcome. So the reason that the project budget variation is sought on Officer District Park was that the works have been progressing significantly ahead of schedule and the works planned in the 24 to 25 financial year is actually able to be brought forward to the 2023 20, to 24 financial year. And um, there is provision in the future forecast for that. Likewise, um, the um, Pioneer Way and Brunt Road intersection, um, um, and it, it is explained in detail to the report, but um, is actually combining different DCP items and different projects. So um, that that all um, is indicative of um, a changed reporting, but it, not a changed spend. So um, I would encourage all councillors to read and note the financial performance and um, the analysis of the differences and I'm certainly um, very happy to note this and um, seek Council's endorsement in noting the report. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Davies. We'll go to the second, Councillor Tammy Radford. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Davies. Um, I'm just really pleased to see that Council is currently tracking ahead of the adopted budget after the first six months um, and I think Councillor Davies summed up everything else very well, so I have nothing further to add. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Radford. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak to this item? There being none, I'll go back to our mover, Councillor Davies, to sum up, please. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Radford. I am delighted to um, read such positive reports um, and um, the many hours that go into council budgeting um, has, is, um, yeah, is certainly um, <laughs> um, being reflected in um, sound management. So um, with great pleasure, I, um, request that council um, notes the report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davies. We'll now put item 6.4.1 to a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried, thank you. Item 6.5.1, Environment Council Plan Initiatives Quarterly Report. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Brett Owen. Thanks, Mayor. I move the following that Council notes the Environmental Council Plan Initiatives quarterly report for the six months to December 2023. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Do I have a second, please? Councillor Colin Ross. Councillor Owen to speak. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this quarterly report provides an update on projects, services, and actions that are undertaken by Council to deliver on the Council Plan focus area number three thriving environments and its associated initiative. So I want to thank uh, the officers for their efforts uh, for the report and obviously the activities uh, in this quarter. Um, I really like this report. It's a great way of um, you know, snapshot um, to inform council of you know, the great work of our waste and environmental teams. Um, I just want to mention a few things. Uh, the biodiversity blitz, um, so throughout September, Council uh, worked with the eastern and southeastern local governments to run a month long bl uh, bio blitz throughout the month. Residents were encouraged to log their nature sightings on their iNaturalist platform. 
So uh, there were two council run events, one at Mary Nile and one in Guys Hill, and I attended the one in Guys Hill and, and bogged my car and trying to get away from that event. But um, but it was a really great, great event. Um, and the whole month we saw 2,135 observations with the most observed plants being the golden bush pea and the common bird orchid. And most spotted animals, the laughing kookaburra and the superb fairy wren. So I just uh, acknowledge the, the team with that. And thanks to all the community members who attended and participated. Uh, also events were trees for weed swap event, a school weeds busters event, um, many others, but uh, Garfield Community Garden Open Day, school visits to the Civic Centre, Seniors Week event at the Emerald Lake Park. Also the Emerald Museum, which is which is amazing group of volunteers between November 22 and October 23, the Emerald recorded a total of 1,376 visitors. Audiences are classified as local, Metro, Melbourne, wider, Victoria, interstate and international. This was the first year official visitor numbers were recorded. This will continue moving forward to assess if uh, the activation activities are seeing an increase in visitor numbers. So that's a really good, good result. Um, also, the green waste. I'm really, uh, really proud of Council's efforts in improving and increasing the green waste drop-offs. There were six gr uh, free green waste drop-offs in 2023, uh, which provides residents with options for managing green waste. Four events in Pakenham and also two in Lissafield. The six green waste drop-offs were strategically organised to align with the open fire burning policy. 2,461 vehicles attended the events, diverting 503.32 tonnes of green waste material for composting. The total cost to deliver these events throughout 2023 was 93,000. Uh, the event in March was the busiest drop-off. Uh, Council will be holding six green waste drop-off events in 2024. Dates for these events will be communicated to residents throughout a comprehensive communication and engagement plan. So there will be some changes to try and um, sort of improve access to residents uh, to this service. So uh, it's great to see that our, our community is embracing that. I'll leave it to other councillors to talk. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Now go to the seconder, Councillor Ross. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Owen, for withdrawing this item. It's quite amazing how far Cowdenia Shy Council has come in this area. When I first got elected in 2008, there was no mobile phones councillors had, and there was only two of us on council out of seven that believed in climate change or sustainability or the environment. And, and at the time, some of the councillors tried to have the sustainability sections taken out of every report because they said it's a waste of time. It's amazing that we've come that far that now that uh, people feel so, so compelled that they want to look after Cardinia Shire in every which way, whether it be environmentally, sustainably, and we've got some amazing council staff that have been in those roles for all of that time. And, and the reports that come through just year by year um, make us more responsible for where we are. We want to look after it for future generations. And I think it really does highlight, as Councillor Owen did, as he went through the different areas in this report, just what we're doing in this area to try and leave the place a, as good a place as what we had, if not a better place for the future. Anyway, I look forward to these reports. They're, they're really good for reading for anyone in the community who wants to see what we're doing in this area. And hopefully we're, we're a good example because we are such a diverse shire. We've got the hills area, we've got the flat area and we've got the suburban area and we need to look after all of it because it's all so different. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Are there any other councillors? Councillor Davies. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to briefly acknowledge the role of environmental education, um, which is supported by a council staff member and the, the community at Broad in um, biodiversity and water and in climate change. Um, the report um, details school education programs provided at Deep Creek Reserve, which are generally healthy rivers, healthy bay, chemistry, physics, biodiversity, and um, these are delivered um, by professional education bodies. Um, and and um, likewise, um, the Banyat Renewables Actions Group, BRAG, um, 
in in um, conjunction with councils, uh, Cardinia Council and also Bobo's Council's, Bobo's Sustainability Network um, have um, presented to community groups on ways they can access assistance with their energy efficiency initiatives and um, what aspects of building are good targets for energy efficiency. It's it's very um, exciting how how much um, knowledge there is, how many way how many ways that all of us can implement. Some, some environmental goodwill into our lives. Um, and um, I'm really delighted to also um, read that um, these um, initiatives are even being implemented with school visits to the Civic Centre. And um, towards the end of last year, both Officer Specialist School and Cairo Christian School have attended. And um, my nephew was one of the children that attended and it was a real highlight. So um, I'm, it's a really, really heartening to read the efforts um, in in collaborating with the community, including the youngest members of our community. And I think that's something that we can note with great pride. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davies, for your comments. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? I see none. I'll go back to our mover, Councillor Owen, to summarise, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just briefly, uh, the report does touch on the container deposit scheme, which is a Victorian government scheme and it's just been reduced uh, sorry introduced the last few months and i think it's a, a really good system it's in the early stages so there is some hiccups you know uh full full um full containers um as in uh, shipping containers and error messages and so forth like that. but it is providing some really great opportunities for our community to raise funds fundraise and also you know the place does look a little bit cleaner and obviously you've got people uh, collecting cans and from the roadsides and you know other open spaces so that that's really good so i look forward to that sort of um scheme improving getting better additional sites and um but it's good to see our community embracing that uh, we've got clean up australia day coming up in march uh, i encourage residents to be part of that it's a great way of reminding people that we all have to do a bit to improve our environment um, and clean up rubbish that unfortunately uh, some people leave around. So uh, I encourage everyone to be involved in that. And also on the weekend, uh, yesterday we had the Upper Beaconsfield Community Festival. It was great to see council with a stand there, um, in, uh, obviously talking to residents about waste and about environment. It was really great to see council officers at that um, festival. It was a really great festival. Thousands and thousands of people. I've never seen it that big. Um, and it had a real strong focus on zero waste and sustainability. So well done to that committee and council for attending. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. We'll now put item 6.5.1 to a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried. Thank you, councillors. Item 6.5.2, performance and growth reports, quarter two, 2023 to 24. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Stephanie Davies. Thank you, Mayor. I move that Council notes the report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davies. Do I have a seconder to that item? Councillor Jeff Springfield. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. Councillor Davies to speak, please. Thank you, Mayor. I'll keep it brief. The magic number is four. That's four households per day moving into our Shire. It was three when things backed off, but now we're up to four. The huge growth um, is really exciting. People know where the best place to live is and um, are making wise decisions. So the report also highlights a range of other indicated um, and um, the organisation commits to continuing to aim target improvement initiatives at the areas and services which are not achieving their targets. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Davies. I'll go to your second to Councillor Jeff Springfield. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This um, uh, performance re quarterly report um, you know, highlights some of the key um, objectives that Council monitors um, in, in, our, um, in our schedule of um, operations and a performance and, and look, um, everything within the report seems to be um, on track um, pretty much and you know, sort of on the acceptable levels that we've had previously. So I'll have nothing further to add. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to item 6.5.2? I see none. I'll go back to Councillor Davies to sum up, please. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. Councillors, I move that the performance and growth reports for quarter two, 2023 to 24 are received and noted. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davies. We'll now put this item up for a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried. Thank you. 
Moving on to item 6.5.3, community engagement update. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Tammy Radford. Thank you, Mayor. I move that Council notes the community engagement activities being undertaken in January and February 2024. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for that item? Councillor Davies. I'll go to the mover to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davies. So uh, we do often refer to this report. It's a way for the community to have a direct connection with Council so that we can be informed by what you would like to see. One of those was one that we mentioned earlier, which is the proposed community local law, um, and that is to replace the existing local law 17. Um, this uh, consultation date will be from 20th of February to 28th of February. There'll be letters and survey for targeted businesses, co Cohorts, and it will also be found on our Creating Cardinia webpage. Uh, there are a couple of other engagements open also, like the Lang Lang Public Art Project. I know it's a big one up there in Lang Lang. So I encourage people to um, go to the Creating Cardinia webpage and have your say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Radford. We'll go to Councillor Davies. Um, thank you, Mayor. No comments. Thank you. Councillor Davies, are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? There being none, I'll go back to our mover, Councillor Tammy Radford. Thank you. I have nothing further to add, just that we note the community engagement being undertaken. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Radford. We'll now put item 6.5.3 to a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried. Thank you. Item 6.5.4. Quarterly Resolutions Report, October to December 2023. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Brett Owen. Thank you, Mayor. I move that Council note the report detailing implementation of Council resolutions for the period October to December 2023. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Tammy Radford. Councillor Owen to speak, please. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Radford. Uh, the attached report details all resolutions made for the quarter ended December 2023 and includes the actions taken to implement the decisions. The report does not include matters listed for noting. So this is a, a good report. Um, it's probably in recent times that this report has been presented to Council. Um, I think it's a really good, good report. It gives councillors confidence that um, obviously resolutions of this council, particularly resolutions that might come from councillors' notice of motions and, and so forth like that, it's really good to see how they are acted upon and it provides uh, the committee with an update as well regarding what's happened on, on those particular items. So I wanted to, uh, there is 18 pages, so you can imagine there's a, a lot of resolutions being acted on, but I just want to mention only a few. Um, so the provision of turf mowing and associated works for sports playing surfaces, uh, 2024 to 2027. So um, uh, council entered in a three year contract with Citywide for the provision of turf mowing and associated works for sports playing surfaces uh, with the option to extend the agreement for two further periods of, of three years. So that contractor has been awarded. Um, there was other um, open space contracts been awarded and contractors have been advised. So I look forward to uh, those improvements to open space. Um, that's definitely uh, is well uh, wanted by our community. So moving on to the Jim Parks Reserve Growing Suburbs Grant application. So council uh, apply for a growing suburbs grant. We did notify the government um, uh, about uh, that support and our intention to apply. So that's great. We wait the outcome on, on the Jim Parks Growing Suburbs um, uh, grant. And finally, I just wanted to talk about, once I find it, uh, the Upper Beacon Sewer response to the petition. Just bear with me, I'll find it. Thank you. 18 pages, I'm going through. Um, sorry. That's OK, take it on. Here we go. Yep. Response to petition power generated provision upper beacon sealed. So uh, the re resolution was um, council note the petition and thanks the residents for their engagement in community emergency preparedness. Council note the response uh, of the emergency management team regarding relief provision in the event of an emergency event as per the Cardinia Shire Municipal Relief and Recovery Subplan 
And the final point was council and community advocate to the Victorian government for the inclusion of more Cardinia Shire townships in the Energy Resilience Systems Program lead by DECA. So we did advise petitioners of that resolution. So obviously with that storm event we just had in the past week, this is really important that council continues its advocacy for, for additional townships um, being covered by the Energy Resilience Systems Program. We do have Gembrook, we do have Emerald and Cockatoo, but Upper Beaconsfield and other townships want this sort of backup power generation. And the last week shows that we need more. We thank the, the, the state government for those already three committed air townships, but we, we need more and Upper Beaconsfield being one. So I look forward to Council's continued advocacy for additional uh, locations. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen, for your comments. Uh, Councillor Radford, please. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Owen, for your summary. Um, as Councillor Owen highlighted, this is a report that provides information and transparency regarding council decisions and the implementation of them. Uh, there are 18 pages. We're not going to get all through that tonight, so I encourage residents to check out this report online so that you can see uh, and follow up with those decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Radford. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? I see none, so I'll go back to our mover. Councillor Brett Owen to sum up, please. No further, thank you. We'll now put item 6.5.4 to a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried. Thank you, councillors. Moving on to item 6.5.5, major projects report. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Stephanie Davies. Thank you, Mayor. I move the report is received and noted. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davies. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Radford. Councillor Davies to speak, please. Thank you, Mayor. I have no comments. Thank you, Councillor Davies. Councillor Radford. Thank you. Sorry, you came to me too quick before I found my notes. Thank you, Council Davies, for withdrawing this. Um, yeah, we love the major reports, uh, major projects report project. Did I say that right? I don't know. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so because we, I like to see the updates, especially on the roads and obviously roads in the office award is a major, major issue with all the road work. So I'm always keen and eager to see what's happening. Um, so just two that I'll highlight now is Bayview Road Officer. So the majority of the civil works are complete as of the end of January 2024 with some minor work still outstanding. The traffic signals um, uh, will be switched on uh, by uh, Osnet and unfortunately this date is still unknown but is expected in April 2024 but I have spoken to council officers and the CEO who are constantly advocating for this to happen sooner rather than later just so residents know but we are reliant on another um, organisation to do it. Tivendale Road um, is scheduled to be complete by the end of April 2024. Um, this one feels like it's been going on for a long time as well. There's been lane closures, traffic diversions in place because of the drainage and pavement construction works on Tivendale Road um, and lane closures are still in place for Station Street due to the drainage and pavement works. Public lighting and signal installation works have commenced and I just really want to thank everybody for for their patience. I completely understand how frustrating these works are. I have to come in and out of them four times a day myself, um, but rest assured we are trying to work with everybody who's involved in this, all the other stakeholders, and try and get this work done as quickly as we possibly can. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Radford. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? I see Councillor Carol Ryan. <laughs> Through you, Mayor, I uh, just wanted to mention a couple of um, projects that I'm really pleased in the, in the progress that's happened. And the Pakenham Regional Tennis Centre Pavilion Extension, um, proposed extension for the Pakenham Tennis Club relocation comprised of steel um, frame structure, full height glazed kitchenette, unisex toilets, facilities, um, balcony overlooking the courts, provision for two persons lift and um, the ex existing external play area. Um, 
this project was fully funded by council. The timing is completed on, two th um, on the 21st of December 2023. It's been a long time coming um, and so it's it's operating now and uh, the uh, Pakenham Tennis Club are really, really pleased that they, they did make the decision to go along the journey and uh, go across there because the tennis courts are absolutely fantastic and, um, you know, there's a lot more, hopefully we'll see a lot more people using that facility now that uh, it's grown with the extension. So, uh, but as I said, these projects take quite a long time. This this project was talked about in 2016. So that's how long it's taken to um, to complete. And thank you so much to the team. I'm so pleased um, with the team and the work that they've done on that project. And just bear with me. I'm just finding the other project. I should have had it printed off. OK. The other one is uh, the Packen and McGregor Road a duplication, including Henty Street um, intersection. The upgrade of the intersection to a signalised intersection. It's funded by uh, Council and DCP funding area in place to complete the design. Additional external funding is required for the project to be processed to construction. Works will be linked to the rail removal by LXRP. The update uh, design submission is currently being prepared for review by Department of Transport and Planning, functional layout plans approved by Council, and the design has been processed into detailed design. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? Councillor Ross. Thank you, Mayor. I can just echo uh, Councillor Ryan's feelings on the Pakenham Regional Tennis Centre Pavilion Extension. It was the very first meeting I went to with Councillor Ryan, um, Councillor Schilling as well, in relation to moving the tennis club across to the um, to the Regional Tennis Centre and um, having a pavilion extension. It's taken nearly eight years for it to happen and for a long time it was really, really tough to win people over, but it's it's excellent to hear that they, they can see the result in the end. It took a long time. We do get things done in the end, but um, it's it's wonderful because that, that facility there was always destined to have, it was always going to be better if it had a club there as well as just being used by the wider community. And the fact that the club's there is excellent. And I'm so pleased to hear that they're really happy with the result at the end of it. So that's one big tick. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ross. We'll go to Councillor Owen, please. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Just briefly, uh, back to the strategic road ceiling program. There's updates on on various roads. I just wanted to provide a, an update regarding uh, mainly Huxbull Road, particularly. I do note uh, there's a number of community questions for Huxbull Road tonight. Um, so just regarding uh, those roads, that, um, Bessie Creek Road, Huxbull Road, Evans Road and Thulis Road, this project is fully funded by Council. Detailed designs have been completed for Bessie Creek Road and Huxable Road. Final environment, environmental impacts have been calculated, which may then require further revisions to the design. As part of this process, planning permits will, will also be sought for tree removal. So the update permits and finalised designs expected to be completed prior to June 2024 for Bessie Creek Road and Huxable Road. Any scheduling of future works will be subject to confirmation of available funds as part of Council's annual budget process. So I do appreciate uh, this um, road has been proposed to be sealed um, for a number of years now because um, uh, there was a strong advocacy uh, by the community a few years ago for that. So I know there's some some issues with funding, but um, it is definitely a priority as a war council that I'll continue to advocate for. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this? Councillor Moore. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, in about roads tonight, there's a big big subject tonight on roads. Um, <clears throat> I, I just Sometimes we, we have a bit of a criticism from our community on resurfacing and rehabilitation program on some of our roads. Um, the point of 
where when we reseal, resurface some of these um, sealed roads, it just seems, why do we do this? But it's to do with our maintenance and what happens if we don't um, reseal some of the sealed roads, um, they deteriorate. And then we get nothing but potholes and that's when we get the worst condition what we have on our uh, sealed, sealed road system. So sometimes these, these roads need to be resealed and re, re, um, um, rehabilitated actually over, over the years. A nine mile road is one of them in Tyong Road and the, one of the biggest ones was seven mile road in Narnagoon recently. And it's just fantastic. The road is just really what a great build they are. Um, and Bald Hill Road, of course, in, in Pakenham as well. Um, so it's really great to see that we are not just rebuilding new roads and, and um, on new programs and the Sealing the Hills um, program and uh, roads like Best Creek Road. And I just want to talk about Door Road in particular. Door Road in particular, it comes up uh, a lot of conversations with residents around where I am um, of what's happening there. What, what are we doing? It's been going on for a long time and some of these things do take a lot of um, approvals. Uh, tree removal, vegetation removal is quite significant these days. So it's um, I'm assuring the residents around that area that uh, these roads are going to be done. And um, we're just looking forward to uh, the program to be in the future, coming up in the future. But um, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to the major projects report? There being none, I'll go back to our mover, Councillor Davies, to sum up. Look, thank you, Mayor. Um, I won't comment, but I just confirm that Council Weave, we are receiving and noting the report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davies. We'll now put item 6.5.5 to a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried. Thank you. That concludes discussion of the agenda items. We'll now move on to councillor reports. Uh, please keep councillor reports to three minutes or under. Councillors, any matters to report? Councillor Brett Owen. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I just want to take <clears throat> opportunity to um, acknowledge uh, the passing of a number of community members in our shire um, over the Christmas period. Firstly, Michelle Noble from Beaconsfield. Uh, she was an amazing uh, person in, in Beaconsfield, uh, a strong advocate for a number of community issues in Beaconsfield and also uh, the community centre. Um, and she was an amazing cook as well, which um, I just acknowledge the passing of Michelle. And I know Councillor Graham Moore knew Michelle very well, um, Cardinia um, swimming. Also, I want to acknowledge um, Rob Porter, the passing of Rob. Um, his funeral was the biggest event I've seen at the the Cardinia Cultural Centre. So I just wanted to talk about, about Rob. The Porter family has been friends of the Owens for over 55 years, following my parents arriving in officer in 1969. I've known Rob and, and Carol all my life. He was our local plumber. He was our officer primary school council president, I oversaw the 100 year primary school uh, centenary celebrations back in 86. He was a footy player, legend and coach. He was a volunteer groundsman at his beloved officer rec reserve and obviously with the support of his family carol um, who obviously drove tractors on that reserve as well as we learn at the funeral also um, jeff and gavin it was a, a big family um, uh, support of that rec reserve regarding his plumbing i have vivid memories of rob and his infamous utes over the years whether it was his uh, holden ute with the uh, r and c porter riding on the on the doors um, and I see one of those doors are hanging in, in the shed of the porters uh, which but I've just got vivid memories as a young young child with that ute driving around officer. Um, he's had other utes over the years whether it was a Ford Falcon or a Commodore ute. Uh, his ute was always jam-packed with all plumbing bits and pieces. His shed was also jam-packed with all uh, with many plumbing bits and pieces you would ever need for for that repair. Thank you. Rob was very supportive of my dad's and my own councillor careers, whether it was Berwickshire, Pakenham or Cardinia Shire. Rob fully supported our campaigns and authorised our election materials. I have fond memories of travelling around the respective wards over the years and putting up election signage and then having many of those conversations about issues of our community with Rob. I will never forget the support he gave me. I will always remember Rob's passion for our community. The Officer and District Community Association, 50 years service. 
chairman of Officer Rec Reserve over 50 years. The Officer Church that was uh, was really at risk of, of being sold. Um, um, so they, with com other community members, saved the Officer Church. Uh, he was heavily involved in the EO and Reserve, uh, particularly around weed control. The Officer Primary School, the preservation of the Officer Memorial Gates, the popular trees along the highway, uh, the Hicks Officer Kiln, the introduction of the Officer Anzac Day services following the uh, renewal of those gates. He was a very strong advocate um, in council purchasing the land for the second oval at the Rec Reserve and also building uh, those facilities. We all know his involvement in the recent um, community rooms project that hasn't been officially opened yet, but uh, it was operating um, towards the end of um, late last year. There is a you know, fundraising effort still to help finalise that uh, that that uh, great uh, rooms, but uh, that was his legacy. Also, his advocacy with the Beaconsfield Reservoir. Over my time as councillor, I had regular contact with Rob regarding matters impacting officer, particularly officer rec reserve. We all know the stories of Rob mowing the ovals in the late hours of the night, whether it was being whether you know he was being visited by the local police for being at the reserve, you know, in the early hours of the morning. You know, they couldn't believe there was someone mowing the lawns at 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, they thought someone was up to no good, but it was just Rob. We all know that often some community members are not a fan of local government. Rob would raise matters with me. He was often frustrated with the machinery of local government, whether it is the red tape or the over-the-top OH&S requirements on volunteers, or in his opinion, often waste of what ratepayers dollars in many examples. However, Rob was always respectful and diplomatic towards councillor and council officers. This was a trait not always shared by others. Whenever I rang Rob, I was always amazed with his promptness in answering his mobile phone. Despite being on the job in sewage pipes or on a roof, he always answered the phone. This trait cannot be said by most. Among many achievements, Rob was awarded the inaugural Cardinia Shire Stan Henwood Award and the 2020 Senior Citizen of the Year Award. I have fond memories of the inspiring video Rob and Carol gave, sharing their, their time during the pandemic, detailing how they managed during the lockdowns. It was a <coughs> really funny video, it was really good. As we all know, one of Rob's most lasting achievements will be his advocacy and achievement of the buildings of the officer community rooms. As I said, soon to be officially opened. Donations are still being sought to finalise the building. Please donate if you can. Months before his passing, Rob rang me up and said, I need to meet you at the Officer Rec Reserve to get things off his chest. He couldn't sleep at night. There were so many things on his chest. He said he was you know, being kept awake, uh, up at night, worrying about matters about the reserve. Days after, I did have my final meeting with Rob at his beloved Officer Rec Reserve. <laughs> he drove me around the reserve in his car. He raised several matters. The issues with the contracted grass cutting around the grounds, the process of council replanning program at the reserve, the ceiling of the car park at the scout hall, where essential services like were located in the reserve, invaluable re information which we may have lost. Issues with block drainage along the McMullen Road frontage of the reserve. In our final conversations on the phone, Rob wanted to thank me and the Owen family contribution to our community. But I stopped Rob and I said, no, Rob, thank you so much for yours and your family's long contribution to Officer and our wider community. It is impossible to adequately describe the valuable contribution Rob made to our community. Words do not give justice to Rob. Rob was highly respected by all that he came in contact with. Rob was the most modest person I have ever met, and he never sought recognition or acknowledgement of his tireless efforts for his community. I look forward to Council's future recognition that Rob thoroughly deserves. After thorough com consultation with the Porter family and the volunteer committee of management of the Officer Rec Reserve. Thanks, Rob, for your friendship, your never ending love of Officer and our community. Rob will always be remembered. Can I please end with a quote from the editor of the Gazette, Gary Howe, reported in the Packham Gazette following Rob's passing. Our world will not be the same without the likes of Rob Porter in it, but it is a much better place for having him in it. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor.
Well done, Councillor. Oh, we want to thank you for your contribution, and um, I think everyone at Council would echo your sentiments. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. Councillors, I'll go to Councillor Springfield, please, for a council report. Uh, look, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, thank you to Councillor Owen for for speaking. I think on behalf of all of us, in a sense, I, there's nothing else I can add that he said to Rob. But I'd just like to acknowledge that no one else in this room knew Rob as close as he did, was as close to him for lifelong. And those in the first four years of this council term, when we shared as um. Rangers ward councillors together and looked at the officer rec reserve and getting their funding. Um, I can lay testament that Rob held a huge amount of love and respect for you, Councillor Owen. Um, and please know that that was genuine, and I can I could observe that from quite easily. But we um he's going to be sorely missed by this community. But um but know that he's sorely missed by you more than anyone else. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Um. On to um, just, just want to report to look the wonderful. Um, I'm going to speak to it a little bit later, but just want to report um, it's been a very devastating time, obviously, with these storms that we're hearing about the news for many members of the community. Um, yes, there are several um, hundred or thousand homes still that don't have power up there, but just a huge shout out to the Emerald ACS, to the local CFA groups to the community um, emergency management recovery team up there that are doing such an amazing coordinated effort together, looking after each other. Um, the storms are devastating, but it is wonderful to see the community spirit come alive and work together to help each other out. So um, really my um, half hour testament to thank the community members up there. They're doing such a great job of looking after each other. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. Councillor Ryan. Through you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Owen, in reference to Rob Porter. Um, one little story with Rob um, at the officer hall, we were planting rose bushes and he informed me that I wasn't holding it straight enough and I had to dig it around. I was doing the digging, he was doing the organising, but uh, great memories and we had a lot of laughs putting those rose bushes in. So, um, but thank you so much for that, um, relaying um, a lot of information about Rob. Um, some of the things that uh, I attended was uh, in January was the senior, uh, the Citizen of the Year Awards. Quite a few of us cancers, I think the majority of us cancers attended, and this was to acknowledge people in our community and the, the good work that they have achieved um, over the time. And uh, you know, a lot of it is volunteer work, and we like to acknowledge them. And uh, some of them were quite surprised in in uh, who was announced in each section so it was great to see. Um, we all celebrated Australia Day in different ways. I conducted two weddings on that day which is always a busy day for me so um, in and around our community so it's great to do uh, weddings uh, within the community and uh, be involved with the people that uh, I also um, interact with as a councillor. Um, official opening on the 31st of January was the official opening of the uh, the toilet block at the PB Ronald uh, uh, Reserve, and um, this was a long time coming too. Um, you know, those toilets were installed originally. Uh, there were no toilets there when I came in 1979. Then there were toilets built in around about 1980, 81, um, when Netball. Um, the Netball, Packenham Netball Association and complained that we had to run over to, um, which is living and learning be building now, but it was the squash courts and the basketball courts. We used to have to run across there to go to the toilet. So we used to all have different breaks so that we wouldn't let the team down. And um, so, um, and the toilets, um, I believe, are, are being well, um, well used and well appreciated within the area. So I'm glad that that was, um, that was achieved. And uh, if We've also got our Connect magazine coming out soon, so keep an eye out for that. All the councillors um, with their information and in um, each ward, um, each resident will get one in the mail and uh, you'll be able to see what we've been up to. Uh, U3A AGM I attended on the 8th of February. That was really productive. There were a lot of um, 
residents there, senior residents, and very active in their questions um, as to what's happening in Cancel. So I always keep them up to date in what's going on with Cancel and also give them the run of where our, our roles are from councillor to to officers, to CEO, to, to um, anyone else that is connected to Cancel so that they get a bigger picture of, of the hard work that everybody in the team as a whole Cancel works. And uh, so I've always got plenty of questionnaires and, and information to find out for them. So that was really great. Um, on the 10th of February, I went to the ARIA Calisthenics um, AGM. They're a very active group and they have their meetings at the Lily Pond um, House and they run all their organisation, their sessions, um, ranging from two and a half years old up to I think there's now up to 72 years old, I think, I believe, that uh, are involved in, in calisthenics and they put on these concerts and I usually try and get to um, most of their concerts and they're absolutely fantastic, um, talented um, uh, group of people. And, uh, and of course, with the mental health and um, mental health action group and the also the Southeastern uh, Mental Health Board. We've been working a lot on mental health and better services and better acknowledgement in getting it out and the awareness to the community in uh, the services that we do need down here and we will keep advocating for that. So that's um, that's my um, monthly run. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Are there any other councillors? Councillor Colin Ross with a report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I won't go into um, things about the, Rob's funeral at the moment. I'll speak about that a little bit later. Um, but it was just amazing how many people, I've never seen a funeral so big and I'm sure there were double the amount of people who would have loved to have come to honour Rob. Um, in relation to um, IYU, I think I've nearly driven the staff crazy in relation to trying to get it open for the general public to come and be able to use it. There will be an announcement coming very shortly that the general public will be able to use the facility in asterisk when it's not booked. And if it's booked for the whole track, you, people need to respect that. But outside of those times, it will be open for the public to come and use. There's different groups that have been using it, like Little Ass Book It, uh, the Casey Cardinia Masters Club come down and do a free training session for anybody to come down and use. The Pakenham Road Runners who take on everybody, um, even if you've never walked a few steps in your life, they'll take you on and give you um, fitness and they'll be able to use the track as well. Uh, the Pakenham Park Runners, and there's over 200 participants just about every single Saturday morning. I know the Mayor does it, and I know Council Owen and his, his children do it on a regular basis as well. Highly used down that area, and it's it's just wonderful to see that the track will be really incorporated with the tracks that are down there anyway. Also too, I attended the Australia Day Kui Rup uh, Australia Day Awards, and the Pakenham Awards that were on the night before and the Pakenham Australia Day event. Um, amazing what the, what what they put on. I must say, Kui Rup does it really uniquely. I, I love going down there. They always make you feel warm and welcome. And they, they're very, very inclusive. And the amount of people who turn up, it fills the whole hall every single time you go there. So thank you very much for the invite and Councillor Cameron for inviting me to come down as well. I, um, at the Pakenham one, we do things a little bit different now. We try and respect all the different uh, events on the day, the citizenships. We try and respect the awards night as well. So it has its own prominence uh, where we highlight the um, award winners which are on the board up here, which Rob was one of and was nominated many times for awards and won many of the awards. Um, also to um, just mentioning um, the citizenships, um, the citizenship ceremonies for anyone in the public who hasn't been to one, absolutely amazing. Uh, my time on council, I've seen over 16,000 new Aussies call Cardinia Shire home when they become Australian residents. A and that is an amazing event. You will see the enthusiasm of these people come along who want to make Cardinia Shire their home and, and they just contribute so much to it. And anyone who would doubt people moving in 
don't add colour to it. They just need to come into the citizenships, how excited they are, how excited about life, how they want to put into the community. It's really amazing. And I know all the councillors share with me when they haven't been to them, when they first get on council and they come along, I'm sure they become citizenship tragics in the end. They just love going there and they love being there. So that's, that's an amazing event I always, always value. Anyway, that's all I've got to add. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Colin Ross. Are there any other councillors? I see Councillor Graham Moore. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd just like to acknowledge yourself um, with the with the storm um, tragedies that we had recently, and um, I want to thank you for um, from the community for what you've done in, in the um, with the media. Uh, they're very hard to deal with sometimes media in these circumstances, and um, and handling the staff and working through the staff in these um, particular up at Cockatoo and Jimbrook and um, Emerald. Um, of course, and uh, Council Springfield, of course, being the ward councillor, you're working well together and it's been acknowledged um, how well you've worked together has been fantastic. Can you pass on to Sarah and your children for allowing uh, the community to have you look after that community up there because it, uh, they're, they're hurting badly and I just want to acknowledge that. May I also acknowledge the staff and the CEO um, uh, for their work behind the scenes. We've learned a lot since 2019 with the fires in 2009 and what we've gone through. And um, especially to you, uh, Deb Tyson, if I may, uh, General Manager of Governors, um, who has um, uh, really stepped up and it's not just a job, there's more than just a job here when we're looking after our community here. And um, I just want to acknowledge um, what you've done for our community here and, um, and, and going to do in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Graham, for your comments. Councillor Moore, um, absolutely agree with the staff. They do a fantastic job and um, yeah, staff at our relief centres are, are heroes, so thank you very much. Are there any other councillors who would like to present a report? Councillor Kay Cameron. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of things um, in relation to the Australia Day Awards. I attended at Cooey Rup this year. I was devastated not to be able to go to Lang Lang because my beautiful auntie received the Citizen of the Year Award at Lang Lang. So that was lovely. Um, and then to the um, awards on the night before on the Thursday night, and then the Citizenship Awards uh, ceremony on the Saturday. Uh, there's been a couple of obligatory AGMs that I've attended, um, and that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Are there any other councillors who would like to present a report? Just before we wrap up, I know we've been mentioning some um, significant community members. I just did want to mention the passing of Verna Thulis, who died at the age of 90 recently, um, obviously leaving a big hole. Um, long, long, long time member of the op shop, uh, the Historical Society, the Agricultural Society. So just thought uh, we'd mention and acknowledge her contribution to our community as well. All right, thank you, councillors. Moving on to presentation of petitions. Are there any petitions? to be tabled at tonight's meeting. I see none, so we'll move on to notices of motion. Before we do that, we might just take a brief recess uh, to 9.05 p.m. just to allow everyone to go to the toilet and get a quick drink before we move into the notices of motion because we have five of them. So we'll see councillors back here at 9.05 p.m. please. Thank you everyone.
Thank you, councillors. Thank you, members of the public in the gallery for allowing us that short recess. We'll now kick the meeting off again uh, at notices of motion. Councillor Ross, you have lodged notice of motion 1088. Can you move your motion, please? I move that that a report be presented to the May Ordinary Council meeting outlaw, outline the process for the renaming of the officer reserve and commit to the undertaking at this process of the renaming of the reserve, the Mr. Robert Porter Reserve or Porter Reserve or any name honouring Mr. Porter or his family. Council will abide by within the appropriate time frame under the geographic names Victoria allows. This report and results will be presented and discussed with the family. Council will abide by the family's wishes. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Tammy Radford. Councillor Ross to speak. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I must say this, this um, I think is one of the easiest things that, that, that could be honouring a man who who's a giant of a man. I. Um, I met Rob very early on um, when I was his ward councillor. Councillor Owen was one of the ward councillors too. And and at the time, um, Rob would would give me a call if he felt that Councillor Owen was a was out there hanging out there trying to make the best he could of things, and he needed some support around the room. So he'd ring me, and when I got a call from Rob, I knew what it was. He needed some help, so he he'd bring me down there, and we'd go for a walk around the reserve and. Um, I can remember um, on one occasion when Councillor Owen brought before the the budget um, that he needed some money spent down at the reserve and it was pretty much on the budget day and um, I didn't think we could get a couple of hundred thousand dollars on the eve of the budget, but I thought we could get the master plan, the concept master plan through which um, we got about 50 or 60,000 bucks through to, to get that done. And from that point, you could actually lever that off, getting more money into the reserve. Well, Rob already had it planned what to do with the reserve, I can tell you. He had it all worked out. And, and this, is, this is a man who, who, um, who, who basically um, nurtured every blade of grass on that ground probably a thousand times. Um, I just think he is, a, is an absolute legend of, of the area as officer. He's an amazing giant of a man who who um, the, the, the best way that we could honour him will be. Um, and when we're long gone, no one will ever remember who moved the motion, who voted for the motion or anything like that. What people will remember is in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years or 50 years when we're all dead, that it's called the Robert Porter Reserve. His family will remember it. His children will remember it, his grandchildren, his great children, and everyone who goes to play on that reserve will go and have a look at they are going to the Robert Porter Reserve. And I think that's it's it's the only just thing that could be done with the reserve. Um, I know that I've had extensive conversations with with the um, the reserve committee down there with, with Gareth, who um we had a chat for nearly an hour about it, and and by the end of our conversation, he was in absolutely vehement agreement. I know people very close to Carol who have had words with Carol, and she could not be in more vehement agreement with um with this. I, I would like to believe that all those people who turned up at the funeral, all of them, could be there on the day that it gets renamed the Robert Porter Reserve. I would like to think that could happen. And the only way that can happen is we get we get on with it and we get the process in place. This is all it's doing. They'll never remember me. They won't remember anyone on the council here, but what they will remember is Robert Porter and what he did at that reserve. And I think that needs to be honoured. And there's many reserves that we go to around Victoria where you go to a, play a sport and there's someone's name there who did something. Nobody, I believe, could have done more than what Rob did. And as Councillor Owen pointed out before, he included a whole lot more stuff than what I did. But I must say, Rob was an amazing man who dedicated so much of his life and his family's life to that reserve that I think it needs to be historically recorded and his name should always be on that reserve. And this is what we're doing. We're starting the process. We did have some good news today. Um, I won't talk about that. It'll come back in the report, but it, but it appears like um, we might be able to get some sort of exemption to get it named earlier than what the two years we thought it might be. But anyway, that'll come back in the report. 
Um, I think it's amazing. I think it's absolutely justice. And I sincerely hope that all those people who attended the, the funeral will be able to stand very, very proud when the day comes that it's the Rob Porter Reserve. Anyway, I, I, um, it's just the right thing to be done. Absolutely. And I must say, um, I know someone very close to Carol who said there's never ever going to be a good time for people dying or, or different things happening. But she said, absolutely, it's the right thing to be done. And she, in fact, said to the person very close to her that she wants Rob Porter to be on that reserve. Anyway, I, I wait on my fellow councillors' um, thoughts on this. Thank you, Councillor Ross. We'll now go to your seconder, Councillor Tammy Radford. Thank you and thank you, Councillor Ross, for this notice of motion. Um, I think it would be a great honour to bestow on Rob Porter, who has made a lifelong commitment to not just the Officer Rec Reserve, but the greater area of officer, um, which is something that he's, I know his family's very proud of as well. Um, in preparation for this notice of motion, I did want to speak to the um, Committee of Management at the Officer Rec Reserve and the family as well to confirm um, that they knew that this notice of motion was happening and to get their thoughts on it. Uh, so um, agree that the family are very happy to see this uh, commence. The um, Officer Recreation Community Asset Committee have um, had a meeting in regards to it and have sent me a letter. Um, just briefly, I know Brett, I'm oh, sorry, Councillor Owen touched on this earlier that Rob led this committee for 52 years and worked at the reserve for more than a decade before 1972. Um, on the committee, there's still a member of the Porter family and two other persons that have known Rob for more than 60 years. So this is a really sensitive, raw subject for everybody involved. Um, and the committee did pass, successfully pass two motions which they wanted me to share today. That the Officer Recreation Reserve Community Asset Committee wishes to have the entire reserve located at 20 Starling Road, currently known as the Officer Recreation Reserve, to be named in honour of Rob Porter. We request that the Porter family be consulted on their preferred name and that council seek an exemption from Geographic Names Victoria, GNV, to waive the waiting period of two years down to as soon as possible. In the event of the Officer Recreation Reserve being renamed in honour of Robert Porter, we request that the RG Porter Social Rooms, currently part of the Western Pavilion, remain so named for perpetuity. perpetuity. Now, I'm not saying my words. I also have a request, a very kind request from the Officer Community Asset Committee that we respectfully in this discussion now. The note, notice of motion has been put um, and just due to the sensitivity and the rawness of it all, they would like that there's no further debate on this. Thank you. May I move to put the motion to vote? Thank you, Councillor Davies. Is there a seconder to put the motion? Councillor Jeff Springfield. Uh, I'll put that to a vote. You, you second. Oh, sorry, just, sorry. I'll put that, put that to a vote. Put it, Please. Thanks, councillors. We're going to put the motion to put to a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried. We'll now put Councillor Ross notice of motion 1088 up for a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried. Thank you, everyone. Councillor Davies, you have lodged notice of motion 1089. Can you move your motion, please? Thank you, Mayor. I'm, I I move that Cardinia Shire Council moves the following motions at the Municipal Association Victoria's upcoming state conference. The motions being one, improved infrastructure planning for growth areas, two, improved social and affordable housing funding for growth areas, and three, financial vulnerability and wellbeing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davies. Is there a seconder for that notice of motion? Councillor Colin Ross. Councillor Davies, please. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Councillors, the Cadenia Shire Council has the opportunity to seek the endorsement of the other 78 Victorian councils to advocate and collaborate across government and the private sector to, to address the issues, challenges and opportunities facing us. I seek your support in moving this. The first motion proposed is improved infrastructure planning for growth areas. Growth area councils have experienced and continue to witness substantial population growth 
The demands on infrastructure and service delivery in growth area councils have intensified due to the aforementioned population growth, the inability for DCPs and ICPs to cover the actual cost of infrastructure under rate capping. Cardinia Shire calls on financial support to address the infrastructure planning needs arising from the significant population growth in growth area councils. The second motion, improved social and affordable housing funding for growth areas. Cardinia Shire Council calls on a review by the state government to investigate legislative targets for social and affordable housing as a requirement of new subdivision over, 20, over 10 lots. Our third proposed motion is financial vulnerability and wellbeing that the Municipal Association of Victoria calls on the Federal Australian Government on behalf of Victoria to conduct a review into the funding mechanism that addresses financial vulnerability and wellbeing nationally and establish a dedicated fund that councils can access to address the financial vulnerability and wellbeing within the communities. Councillors, the motions um, proposed um, are not strange topics to you. Um, they, they have been um, prepared and I have sought the advice from staff um, on suitable content, content to um, achieve the, the greatest reach possible. Um, all proposed motions align with our council plan and um, policies um, previously endorsed and um, they centre on our advocacy needs. So significantly we can support our community um, as their council by elevating um, elevating our priorities at a higher level. So I am seeking your support that Cardinia Shire Council lodges this um, for consideration at State Council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davies. We'll go to your second, Councillor Colin Ross. Thank you, Mir, and thank you, Councillor Davies. Um, I was involved in the growing suburbs area um, over the last few years, and I know Councillor Davies is involved in that area, and I know all the mayors that we've had and deputy mayors are involved in that as well. Um, the, the first part of this really does address some of the growing suburbs fund that used to be $100 million that went to $50 million is now at about $10 million. So they really haven't got on board and they truly don't understand how the growing areas are going to provide funding when, when the, the rate cap, which I support, isn't fulfilled right up to the, um, the CPI, which it should be. Uh, they need to provide for the growing suburbs fund again or like funds because otherwise how do you expect councils to to um to afford the infrastructure that's needed. Secondly, uh, social and affordable housing. The only way you're going to make developers um, do something in this area on a consistent basis is to have it legislated in the Planning Act that they have to do certain things with with ratios. And with the second part of this notice of motion that addresses that. And the third one is financial vulnerability and wellbeing. We, we in Cardinia Shire, I know being on the Financial Wellbeing Committee, um, we see the dips and flows in our council all the time. We've got people who, who look for affordable housing, who move to the outer suburbs, who it costs them a lot of money to drive back and forward for their jobs. And they need to make sure that the people out here are well served. At the moment, we have systems where they give money to a different area, they give money to an area, and it might be Danny Nong Casey and, and Cardinia Shire. Unfortunately, a lot of the money goes to Danny Nong because it's easier to deliver. And poor old Cardinia Shire out at the other end gets gets the peanuts at the end of it because it's too costly to drive out here and to, to have the space. That needs to be addressed. We need to get our own money and it needs to be based on the fact of the vulnerable and, and the needs of our community. Anyway, I support this. I hope my fellow council as well, and I look forward to this notice of motion going forward and see if it goes somewhere that uh, someone will listen to it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this item? I see none. I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Davies to sum up, please. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Ross. Uh, I confirm I propose that Council moves three motions as listed, which are all centering on our advocacy needs. At length, each we have been briefed on the issues therein, and significantly, each of these will support our community um, in line with their requests from us. This is one important role of our council to elevate community interests and advocate where where it may be may be effective. As they say, you don't ask, you don't get. So we're going to ask. We know our needs and we have data and in seeking the support across the local government sector, we can strengthen our voice. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davies. We'll now put notice of motion 1089 up for a vote. All those in favour? 
Against? I declare that carried. Thank you. Councillor Radford, you have lodged notice of motion 1090. Can you move your motion, please? Thank you, Mayor. That a report is provided at the April Ordinary Council meeting that provides an update on the progress of Officer Town Centre, noting the precinct structure plan was endorsed in September 2011 and amended November 2019. The report is to include information that is not deemed confidential on any current planning applications or permits for both residential and commercial developments, details about the land ownership with state and private providers, and any action taken by the Council to facilitate development in the Officer Town Centre. Thank you, Councillor Radford. Do I have a seconder for that notice of motion? Councillor Jeff Springfield. Councillor Radford to speak, please. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Springfield, for your second. I'm requesting this report because it's Look, we're sitting in the middle of a paddock and everybody is wondering what's going on. Where is, when is the town centre happening? We've got businesses just down the road who've invested and not doing well because they need the rest of the town centre to support it. We've got people who have purchased in this area thinking that they would have a town centre available to them and they don't. So I really want to look, I'd probably be a millionaire if I had a dollar for every time I was asked about the town centre. Everybody wants to know what's going on. So I'm asking this for this report so that it can formally outline the landowners. I don't think even sometimes we're all aware of who owns what land and what's happening with it, what planning permits are, are coming up that we're allowed to talk about. So I just really want to be able to give this information to the community so that they are informed, we're being transparent and maybe, you know, a little bit of hope that it's coming someday. So that was the reason for this notice of motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Radford. We'll go to your second at Councillor Springfield. Uh, thank you, Mayor, um, and thank you, Councillor Radford. I um, I support this. Um, it has been a long time coming. I remember um, all starry-eyed starting at this council for my first day back in 2016, and we were talking back then about how this is about to be the town centre over here and, and these wonderful buildings, and look, and, and it hasn't come. So uh, it would be great to have a report that we can share with the wider community outlining some of the constraints and the difficulties and noting too, a lot of it is, you know, it's private ownership. It's, you know, it's commercial market space driven um, type of structures here. So, um, you know, we can't necessarily make people do things when and where, but it would be good to have the details that we can share that's not commercial and confidence type, um, as is noted in the request. Um, so, yes, very happy to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this notice of motion? I see none. I'll go back to our mover. Councillor Radford to sum up, please. Thank you. And thank you, Councillor Springfield, for your words of support. I think we uh, mentioned earlier in the UDF item that there were 80 landowners. Like, that's just incredible. When you look at this area, it doesn't look like there'd be enough of for, to have 80 landowners, but that's how many different people are involved with this, which is part of the reason why it's so hard to get it up and running, I think. But anyway, this report will outline things like that. It's very important for this community. It's very important for the residents and the business owners in the area to know what's going to be happening, what's happening now, and what is council doing to continue advocating for further action in the future. So I please uh, request and hope for your support on this notice of motion. Thank Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Radford. We'll put notice of motion 1090 up for a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried. Thank you, councillors. Councillor Radford, you've lodged notice of motion 1091. Can you move your motion, please? Thank you, Mayor. Request that the removal of the original playground equipment located at the Officer Recreation Reserve be halted so that a safety report can be completed and further consultation with the Officer Recreation Reserve Committee of Management can be conducted. Thank you, Councillor Radford. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Brett Owen. Councillor Radford, please. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Uh, yes, the uh, Officer Recreation Reserve Committee of Management had, had reached out. They were notified by Council that the playground was going to be, the old playground was going to be removed in two weeks. Um, so this took them by surprise. They weren't aware that that was happening, especially as we've just mentioned, so quickly after the passing of Rob Porter. Um, and so they weren't prepared for this. Their understanding was that when the new playground was 
was installed, that that old one would just remain where it was. Um, so there's a I've made some in, inquiries with council. Um, obviously, there you know it could be considered as a high risk asset. Um, so it does require frequent safety inspections and maintenance due to its age and condition, but the, the uh, Reserve Committee has not received a safety report. So this notice of motion is seeking that that report be given to the committee and that consultation with the committee before they jump straight in and tear it out, that that is had. Um, I, you know, it may still mean that that playground needs to be removed, but I think we're just missing a step here. We've just jumped straight to removing it without any consultation. Consultation. So that's really what I'm seeking here. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Radford. We go to the second, Councillor Brett Owen. Thank you, Mayor. I do support Councillor Radford uh, with this notice of motion. I do appreciate the officers do have concerns, and you know I do acknowledge that. Uh, but I do recall um, being in uh, the community of management um, meetings when Council was conducting the consultation regarding the new playground that abuts uh, Starling Road. And definitely they were very clear back then, and we're talking probably almost five years ago now, um, they were very clear that their intentions was to still keep the existing playground um, near the tennis courts, because it is still being actively used by young people. Um, I think I had many times uh, in the playground, so playing myself, you know, <laughs> that sort of shows how old the asset is, but um, Definitely, uh, definitely the intention of the committee management for is that to remain. So I look forward to that safety audit for um, for that to come back. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this notice of motion? I see none. I'll go back to our mover, Councillor Tammy Radford. Thank you, Councillor Owen. And we all know you were on the slide last week. Don't try and say it was years ago. Um, thank you. I appreciate the, the history behind that. This is exactly what the committee is telling me, which is why it is a conflicting approach. Uh, so that we just need to get sorted. Um, so if we're just, as I said, it's very clear, just a safety report and consultation with the committee before we remove it. So I'm requesting that this is halted for the moment. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now put notice of motion 1091 to a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried. Councillor Springfield, you've lodged notice of motion 1092. Can you move your motion, please? Um, I would like to move that Council notes the work undertaken to respond to last week's storm event, which includes establishing relief drop-in centres, activating green waste management opportunities for residents, options for perishable food waste disposal, cleanup and clearance of debris, um, from access roads as required, and that council continue to support our community needs through its recovery. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Brett Owen. Councillor Springfield to speak, please. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Um, this notice of motion started, I think, uh, after the storm. So come Wednesday morning, early Wednesday morning, I, I, I threw out a notice of motion there to um, offer green waste services, realising of what this impact was from the storms from the previous afternoon. Um, but that is redundant now because, as I asked it, the green waste services were already activated. Everything's been activated. Let's um, really, uh, so this was, so this turned into an opportunity just to speak to this, to one, to acknowledge the hardship that the residents have faced, and it has been, it was quite a terrific, quite a terrible storm front that came through. Um, just to note that people, there's still hundreds, uh, if not thousands of people without power um, as we speak, um, which will hopefully be returned soon. My mind came back on today. So, um, but um, I want to notice, note the efforts of council because I'd had a list of things to request and, you know, I, I'm very proud of our council staff because I didn't have to go ask for them or, or come through a council meeting to do that. Uh, I, I put my hand up, it was already being delivered. Um, we really jumped to action. The, the staff here um, in the emergency um, re relief space really jumped into action and by Wednesday morning, we had relief centres open the next morning in um, Emerald and Cockatoo, providing information um, and helping residents where they could, and everyone was on the run. There was no pre-planned thing to know this is what's happening, this is where it's coming from, this is whatever, but we had our emergency management plan in place, which 
comes into play. It could have been a bushfire, could have been a a, a, a storm event, it could have been um, whatever type of dis natural disaster we might face, and that got enacted. Um, and oh yeah, we got to save on the loading. Anyway, um, so re really happy to see that the council officers res respond and just. Great, thank you to, to Carol Diss, our CEO, and to Deb Tyson, who's been leading a lot of this. Um, I gave her a call on on Tuesday afternoon. I think she was just about just before five o'clock, and she was probably about to crack open a, a wine or something to relax. I'm like, I'm like Deb, you know, this is really serious. It's going to be bigger than we think because it's I can cars are lining up out in the main road in front of me. It's going to be it's actually going to be epic. I didn't realize how big a footprint it would have made you know of the devastation but um as we spoke and bear you were there as we spoke with the um ses people last week last friday um i think the ses said that this is more devastation than they experienced in those 2021 storms more property damage created from trees and debris um in this localized area of this um so amazing compared to i think a lot of you know probably mount dandenong was more so the 2021 had the height of it but anyway but Back to this. Just wanted to just want to take this time to mention this. So thank you, Mayor. I'll, I'll finish there. Thank you, Councillor Springford, for your thoughts. Um, Councillor Owen is the seconder, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Springfield, for detailing um, obviously the following the events. Uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, the great work of our staff. And as per the the motion, it does say that Council continue to support our community needs for this recovery. So. Thank you, Councillor Springfield, for highlighting what Council has done, but Council will continue supporting our community. And, and definitely, um, obviously, we know the township's affected, but, you know, areas such as Upper Beaconsfield, Jewelhurst, Mount Burnett, Packham Upper were also um, heavily affected as well. Um, of course, uh, the other townships, Jembrook, uh, Cockatoo and, and Emerald, uh, as stated. So uh, I'm really pleased that Council will continue to support our community during this um, event. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Ross. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for raising this item. I think um, I know that Council, we do things amazingly well in emergency times, whether it be floods, fires, or in this case, storms. I must say, I, I was absolutely amazed when I drove up there on Wednesday. I don't know how, how many people I had working on the, the SES. Absolutely amazing. Nearly every 100 metres or 50 metres, there were trees that were cut on the side of the road. I don't know how, how they worked all night to get them all cut down. Wherever you drove, you could still drive on the roads. 24 hours later, they had done an amazing job. I know our SES up in Emerald are either the busiest or the second busiest unit in all of Victoria. They do an amazing job. It should be really highlighted. And I think council, it's an honour to be able to support them in the job that they do, that we can actually support them with ratepayers money. It's really ratepayers money just coming back to them and we dedicating our resources to help them to the best of our ability. Um, it, it, it is just phenomenal when you have a look at the, the system just lock into place that we can actually support people. And I think the councillors do an amazing job all the way down in our offices who just dedicate so much. And the council is here too, just dedicating the budget to just say what, whatever it takes is what we do to try and make we support these people. So anyway, I just think it's an amazing group. I'm so proud of Cardinia Shire, how we deal with these sort of things. We just do it like um, we, we just have to get the job done. Anyway, all those groups need to be acknowledged in the long run. And while it's in the cleanup phase, and as it was commented that we're into the recovery stage just about now. so. Anyway, we'll wait and in a few months time, I'm sure we'll get a report back and find out how it's all gone and, and what we had to do and, and how the community are travelling. Anyway, I look forward to um, the, the noting and, and future reports back. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this? Councillor Kay Cameron. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to um, reiterate what everybody else has said and just um, to mention the farmers who couldn't milk their cows because they didn't have power, couldn't chill the milk, so it all had to be tipped out. So there's, you know, not uh, only the people in the hills that have been affected, but the people on the flats have been affected as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak to this? Councillor Carol Ryan. 
through you, Mayor. Thank you, councillors, for um, passing out the information and, and, and what the team does. Without the team, without council, um, these things wouldn't work with the um, with just one particular team. It's a team effort for all the emergency services as well as council. And I commend everyone that's been part of this team to to get out there and, and do the work. I was without power for three days, and luckily enough, I had gas. So we had um, so I was helping some of my neighbours with um, who were only on electricity and couldn't cook, couldn't uh, couldn't heat bottles up for their babies. And and uh, so we all contributed as as a United Street. And, um, you know, um, some people learn how to survive when you don't have power. So um, again, thank you to the team. Um, it really makes you appreciate um, having the team out there and what they do and the hard work that they do out of their hours as well and dedicate their time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Are there any other councillors? Councillor Graham Moore, please. I'd like to acknowledge the, the community out there that, that have got together and uh, pulled together to make this happen. They showed a lot of patience and resilience. I certainly witnessed it personally up, up um, around the Nanagoon North, Jembrook area, the, the actual people got out in the streets and cleared the roads and whatever because they, they knew it needed to, to be done by someone. So they're out there with chainsaws and um, really um, working together as a, as a community and you really see it firsthand. Um, so I was, um, I congratulate them for, for what they've done to stick there, stick with it. So it's uh, great to have a, to live in and work with a fantastic community, Mr Mayor, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Are there any other councillors who wish to speak to this item? I see none, I'll go back to our original mover, Councillor uh, Springfield to sum up, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and look, uh, thank you to all my fellow councillors uh, for, for their comments and contribution. Um, and as noted, this really was shire wide and, and, and statewide. It's talking all the way down Gippsland, Power Edges, all the way into there's places in, so Roval and along Wellington Road and things that were really hard hit by, by um by the storm front that ran through. Um, Look, just an opportunity to quickly note, you know, Greenways drop-off services are still available every day um, at both Pakenham and Listerfield. Tips for our residents, um, it's been so far, it's been over 80 tonnes have been dropped off, um, then I'm told. Um, the relief centres are still open each day, um, which can help with information. It can help with people if they need to power up anything, get some food to eat, um, report on issues, and also for disposing of food. There's going to be a lot of um, food disposal, which um, which I'm going to be utilising as well. Uh, now, you know, when the power came back on, it's all frozen up again, <laughs> all this, this smelly meat. But anyway, we'll fix that up. But look, really huge effort um, from all the community working together, and especially the emergency services that I mentioned before, um, and council staff and council's team that, that have all stepped out of their usual roles to f facilitate an emergency management response, and which will soon migrate into the, um, into the recovery response. And look, I really... Um, welcome all the effort that we can do um, as a group, as councillors, um, to support our community through this. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Springfield. We'll now put notice of motion 1092 to a vote. All those in favour? Against? I declare that carried. We're moving on to community question time. We have received seven sets of community questions for tonight's meeting. Uh, it is unlikely that the people who have asked these questions are in the gallery, but for the purposes um, of proper governance, we are going to go through the process. So the first is a series of questions received from Paul McMurray. Is Paul in the gallery? I note Paul is not in the gallery, so he will receive a written response to his questions. The second question is from Vincent Tockley. Is Vincent in the gallery? I note Vincent is not in the gallery. He will receive a written response. The third question is from Carol Porter on behalf uh, of the Officer and District Community Association. Is Carol in the gallery? I note Carol is not in the gallery. She will receive a written response to her question. The fourth is three questions which have been received from Annette Wiedemann. Is Annette in the gallery? I see Annette is not in the gallery. She will receive a written response. The fifth question is from Michael Cox. Is Michael in the gallery? I note Michael is not in the gallery. He will receive a written response. The sixth question is from Benjamin Howe. Is Benjamin in the gallery? 
I know Benjamin is not in the gallery. He will receive a written response. The seventh question is from Suresh Para. Is Suresh in the gallery? I note Suresh is not in the gallery. They will receive a written response. Thank you, councillors. And just before we wrap up tonight, I do just have to make a couple of brief statements, please. Um, the first is on the Gaza situation, which councillors have been uh, receiving some feedback from. So as a council, Kardinia Shai expresses deep concern regarding the situation in Gaza amid the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, recognising the ongoing loss of lives and widespread suffering. We acknowledge that there are residents in our community who represent all sides in this conflict and many other conflicts that are ongoing in other countries as well. As a local government, our primary focus is on local community and residents, and we acknowledge the limited authority that local governments have in international relations or conflicts. We recognise and agree with the sentiment expressed by local government minister, Melissa Horn, uh, who said the Israeli and Hamas conflict is a complex global situation that needs to be negotiated by world leaders rather than the Victorian local government sector. Nevertheless, we wish for the prevalence of human rights and global peace in this situation. Our thoughts and condolences go out to all members of our community affected by this conflict. We won't be providing any further comment on this matter. Thank you, everyone, and thank councillors for their support in that. And lastly, just to the storm event, which I commend Councillor Springfield for his notice of motion before. Um, and I think the right people have been thanked, um, but a couple of people I think who need to be thanked again, um, obviously our emergency services, particularly the, also sorry, the council officers who are in the relief centres. Um, it is quite emotionally taxing at times for those people. So I think they do a fantastic job and I just want to thank them. Um, and finally, I did just want to thank our volunteers who are supporting our food relief organisations up there. Um, there are many people in our community who can't afford to restock their fridges uh, after this event. Uh, and that gap is being filled by volunteer organisations at this stage. So I think it's important um, that we thank them. So thank you. And I just want to, our community to know, and I hope that they get this feeling that we are standing with you um, so yeah, absolutely. Please get in touch with us if you are in need of anything. Thank you, everyone. Uh, that concludes um, tonight. So we'll, we actually now need to consider an in-camera item. So the live stream is going to end uh, and the meeting will close immediately after the, this in-camera item. So thank you, everyone. I thank those members in the gallery for attending. Thank you. <laughs>